So what this is, is a farewell to Duskmorn flavor draft, because usually we would do quite a few videos over the course of Duskmorn's life, yeah. but we've been busy making Fallen Empires videos and instead, and that's busy. cool. And we went to Vegas, we had a lot yeah. going on. Yeah, and that, that's all great and yeah. worth it. Um, but then we were like, okay, we'll do one video where we just go through a quick draft, taking as yeah. long as we need for every pick, to just look at the cards and talk about it. Yeah. And we did that. Mm -hmm. and it was I, fun. It seemed to go really well. Mm -hmm. And then we realized that after the first 10% or so, um, all the audio was lost. Yeah. Uh, deep frustration. I was... Uh, you were inconsolable. I was kind of devastated yeah. uh, when I discovered that. And if that had happened, this would have gone up like the day before Foundations release. That was the intent. Instead, today, <laughs> as we're recording, is the yes. day Foundations release. So you will see it after that. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I've got my emotional support possum. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is play the 15 minutes or so of audio that did work. And then we'll be back in the future or present hour, however that works. Yeah. Um, retroactively describing and trying yes. to recreate our performances. Yes, we will try to remember all the funny things we said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It begins. Alright. <laughs> so pack um, one, pick one. Yeah. So um the term <laughs> as fan I think is really important. I don't uh -huh. know, like I have read so much Mark Rosewater, so many of his articles. Yeah. But I'm just like some of these things I, I think of as common terms. They're probably not entirely that yeah. common. Uh, do you know as fan? No, I don't know that word. So it's a term that I haven't seen him use it recently, but he certainly has in the past talked about the as fan in a pack. And it's like if your theme uh, of the of the set you're in, if it's an artifact set, mm -hmm. you need to have at least like two artifacts every time you open a pack and open the fan and fan out the cards. Okay. How many do you see? And I've been thinking survivors in particular should probably be low as fan they should always be there because if horror movie is the theme yeah. you need to have protagonists yeah but they're outnumbered yeah by the spookies. yeah so there should be spooky stuff and spooky yeah. things outnumbering the protagonists yeah. so what do we see here when we open a pack I definitely see. more spooky things yeah. than survivors two survivors we have two survivors we've got is it two? I think we just have two fears. Fear of the dark and fear of lost teeth in lost this one. Lost teeth in the dark, yeah. I love the fear of lost teeth art. I'm really into that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's super creepy. And I've, that's the thing. I've played so many drafts. <laughs> I've had 90 plus drafts. Yeah. I love this format. It's yes. twice what I've played in other, in, no, not quite twice, but like way more than I've played in yeah. any other format. Very high ever. number. Yes. It's so great. But I have probably sort of become numb to some of these things. Yeah, no, Fear of Lost Teeth is Super creepy. one of my favorites. Hospital bed. Yeah, there's a lot of a lot of notes here. I don't think I ever noticed the faces. Yeah, there's all the, these yeah. faces behind. You've got the jaw sort of shape, mm -hmm. the teeth growing up out of the jaw. There's a unsettling number of them. Yeah. And some of them are coming loose. There's just a lot of great things happening here. Yeah. And then the jaw itself has like its own mouth underneath that. <laughs> so yeah. um wonderful execution for fear of lost teeth. Yeah. Very uh, excited about And a this. thing I tend to overlook in Arena is that you can see the flavor text for you all these can. things. It just appears yes. separately here on the upper left of, of that particular card. Um other things to call out. I took a while to appreciate what Unable to Scream actually represents. Mm -hmm. It's like any entity being trapped in the body of a doll. Yeah. And that's really cool. And I don't know why it took me so long to process what that meant. Because I was, I get so fixated on the spiky part of draft that I yeah. stopped thinking about it. No, that, this but. is a great one because you, like, the doll has no mouth. Yeah. And only one of the eyes looks it's the only way you can tell alive. it oh no there's someone yeah. really trapped in the, there yeah the rest of it's kind of featureless yeah. and yeah this is this is really great I, I like this one as an understated scary card yeah because like at first glance like you said you probably don't really notice it being particularly spooky and then like as you're playing with it or the more you think about it it's like, like wait, oh like, no why that's is terrible it unable to scream and that's like, oh, kind of scarier than the rest of this stuff that's kind of horrifying yeah yeah um, I think we've talked about the skull <laughs> yeah. crab before. It was while we were making fun of Eerie. Yes. But crabs are awesome. Yeah. And skeletons are awesome. Major shout out for carcinization <laughs> in uh, 
in Duskmorn. Yeah. I, is it is it carcinization? Why am I carcinization? Just saying, carcinization? Yeah, I was like yeah, yeah. I'm second guessing the way I said that. Turn into crab. Yeah. The crab case. illusion. Yeah, the crab um, illusion. Yeah, love that that exists. Spirits occupy this weird in between space in terms of like, mm-hmm. are they scary? Or yeah. are they like And there are some helpful spirits in this one, like Friendly Ghost. Yeah, that's the thing. Like that one explicitly says yeah. Friendly Ghost. In the stories like the story only touches on so many mm-hmm. of these things and they seem just scary like things to be avoided there but and yeah they're kind of in between that uh, one this looks one looks a lot spookier unpleasant yeah yeah would not honestly again i've never looked closely and seen like the skull mm-hmm. in this i'm glad we're doing this <laughs> yeah uh, i like the flavor implication of the function on this one mm-hmm. is that it gets stronger if there are more unlocked doors uh-huh. which kind of implies that it it needs you to unlock the door that like it can't just phase through the wall yeah <laughs> Which I like. I uh-huh. like that it can't necessarily just phase through the wall at will. Yeah, yeah. But, um, Which is actually like the premise of what spirits are yeah. largely is that they are squeezing through the cracks in reality right. or whatnot per the Planeswalkers guide. But mm-hmm. And then uh, the, these shepherding spirits, they don't seem to fit cleanly into that model for me. They don't look yeah. as... I guess they are a little glitchy. They look like nurses from the early 1900s. Mm-hmm. They don't look... 1980s to me yeah they look like they're older um they don't look particularly scary i don't know if they're menacing yeah. or not well they're shepherding so i think yeah, not. i was like i feel like they're probably not but like they are still spirits so yeah. we don't know if they're i like they could still be a little spooky and that like yeah. i don't know if you're helpful or not i thought just that the spirits would all be spooky i thought that yeah. was part of the deal and speaking of as fan that me- makes this pack a little more welcoming and hopeful than mm-hmm. i would expect because we have these two friendly spirits one yes. explicitly we have the two survivors mm-hmm. and we, we have, have the cute little the glimmer uh, the elk glimmer which is very cute mm-hmm. yeah definitely like not this. spooky yeah the tree is spooky but the elk is nice looking yeah I, I do like these glimmers. Yeah. I think this pack is slightly more hopeful. On and the then... Hope. Yeah. And, and then, then we have you have Valgavoth himself. Yeah. So, so, I don't know. I think that kind of balances it out. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, you're right, you're right, you're right. All right, I think that's uh, everything I really wanted to call Yeah. I, I do love the dual lands, but I think we'll talk about those more when we hit some of the common ones. Yeah. Um, but then what do we take? I mean... In terms of actually playing a game after this, mm-hmm. Valgavoth is so cool, but it's, Valgavoth is it's really so only good in Reanimator, yeah. which is not a very good archetype. Uh, this is probably the better card, but I kind of want to take Valgavoth just because it's so cool. It is really cool. That's what we do, right? Yeah, let's, yeah, I right, let's, say, I vote let's for do Valgavoth. that. And if that's not what happens, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Well, okay. Pack number two. Yeah, I'm having problems staying focused on flavor oh, here. Is, this is so interesting how I haven't actually seen how they show the rooms oh, yeah. in this format. That's neat how they're stacked on top of each other in the default view. And then if you hover, you get this uh-huh. view. I have never noticed the eyeball in Drowned Diner. Oh, I haven't either. Look I love at that. that. That's so great. Meat Locker is like, yeah, I get the creepy reference. That's yeah. cool. It's the same as like the original Meat Hook Massacre. Mm-hmm. Like we've seen that imagery yeah, before. That's but that's not new. The octopus Love and the, the half submerged. The yeah, that's, that's wonderful. That's great flavor. And then uh, Grand Entryway. Oh, I never noticed how spooky that bust is oh, in the wow. elegant rotunda. The one on the right here? Yeah. Yeah. I've never gotten a good look at that. That is a creepy mouth. Yeah. Well, I hadn't actually noticed that that was the glimmer in the lower left uh-huh. though either. Man zooming on these things it really does something then what's going on in the elegant rotunda with these like masks up high i can't really tell i'm not what's sure going. yeah that's that's kind of a confusing one and there's something dark creeping up mm-hmm. in front of that middle statue is that like one of the creepy uh oh look at the shadows upside down yeah there's upside down shadows which what is i don't going know on? what's casting the shadow like are they hanging from the ceiling and just like out of sight yeah or i, I, don't, so. I don't know what that's from that's that's a lot of spooky there's I like a that. lot of stuff going on in that that's like more like at first glance you might not see all those things but the more longer you look at it i don't know if there's a good word for that kind of spooky but like initial yeah. impression is kind of mundane yeah. and then you stare at it a little bit longer and realize like oh there's actually a lot of really creepy stuff going on here um oblivious bookworm so 
you and I, I think we're we're pretty enfranchised players. Mm-hmm. We're Vorthos nerds. We yeah. have a channel here. Yeah. We pay attention to this stuff. So we knew we knew the alt art existed for some of these cards yes. where there's an extra creepy, spooky mm-hmm. figure. What I only found out like last week is that on arena, when you get below a certain health, they show up. <laughs> Oh, that's during the game. I love that. So if we if we actually record the gameplay on some of these, maybe we'll see that happen with something. I love that Um, feature. I love the flavor of the worker Mm. folk. I liked the stories for this, but Mm. I was really disappointed by two things. One is just how little there are, and that's kind of a common complaint. The stories always feel rushed to me. There's just not enough space for these stories and these settings to breathe. Um, But also some really specific things I wanted to hear more about. And specifically characters. I was so frustrated. Like, they clearly, at some point in vision design or whatever, they say, okay, this character, Winter, he's going to be a character. He's going to have cards, and he's going to be in the story. Yeah. But the I wanted to hear more about Dawn and City, who are, like, the the side city uh, side stories with the carnival. Mm-hmm. Like, the protagonist there is Dawn, and the antagonist is someone who seems to be a member of her community and he shows up and he's like, ha ha, I'm in the cult. <laughs> and then he stalks her over to thing. And it's, uh-huh. There's just so much there and those characters don't have names. And then I sent you the thing about the beastie background. I loved the beastie story. Oh, that was so great. That was really good. I love the beasties and there's only like four mm-hmm. beastie cards I think in the set and I, it kind of is appropriate that we don't see them yeah. like in every single um, pack. That because makes sense. They're a little more elusive. They, yeah. they feel like they're not they're, it's, front and center. And they're kind of big so. and powerful, so yeah. it feels like there should only be a few of them yeah. around. They I, shouldn't I do just love be them. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I love the beasties. They they really speak to my soul. Yeah. But I guess this pack, just looking at the whole mm-hmm. thing, and it's only one fewer card, is yeah. a little closer to what I would have expected because we have one survivor, though mm-hmm. the Oblivious Bookworm doesn't have the survivor type, but it's yeah. the, the human who is clearly in a survivor faction, right? And then we have one glimmer. Yeah, everything else is creepies. Yeah, it's either, like, (laughs) explicitly trying to kill you, monster, or it's just, like, a little eerie. I really like the the found footage art. um, Because it just reminds me of, like, Resident Evil kind of video gaming, like survival yeah. horror yeah. kind of like this is something you would find and you know like pop it into your little tape player and listen to a creepy message. I know this this like the idea of televisions yeah. was one of the most controversial parts of the flavor of this set. Yeah. People didn't a lot of people just did not like that they were incorporating such modern yeah. technology into magic and. I mean, I was among that group, and I still don't love it, mm-hmm. but it's worked well enough. It doesn't yeah. bother me that much. It bothers yeah. me a little bit. <laughs> but, like, this, and partly the draft format has just been amazing, which just yeah. in- increases my uh, mood toward all of this stuff. Yeah. But, um, and speaking of the carnival, this is the setting for those two side stories. At least, like, the beginning of yeah. where those start, and I love... Oh, that cool. I have really liked the whole carnival side, which I guess is kind of the Boros aesthetic. You have the vicious clown, maybe we'll run into mm-hmm. later, and and a bunch of stuff kind the of in that room. Right. Man, yeah, I hate him. I know he makes me so uncomfortable. Yeah. Oh, but I forget to finish talking about the scarecrows. Oh yeah, the so wicker folk. That's yeah. just I, I'm glad there are more scarecrows for my Reaper King yes. commander deck. Yes. But also these ones are just really creepy, and there is part of the Planeswalkers Guide and stories about how they, you know, are people who get converted into scare like trapped in the shell of a scarecrow and i don't know it's yeah that's eesh. that's real spooky yeah i like that i do too and i like the art on this card like it's a lot of times when we see scarecrows yeah they're not very dynamic they're not necessarily moving or doing anything they kind of feel almost more like they're planted a lot of the times place. when there's like a single one in yeah. a set it's the color fixer yeah yeah then like they'll just be there or like they might be they might i was gonna be say moving. like the more the shadow more ones those were yeah, pretty those, dynamic those but... are very different but like a lot of times when it's like the yeah. color fixer you're right you're right that creature they're just kind of parked somewhere yeah there, there was like a wild of eldrain yeah one, and there's the one from the lord of the Rings set yeah and yeah. occasionally they are in motion but they're usually yeah. not like this you're right, one you're right. feels menacing oh, and i yeah. like that yeah um you like this little guy? I love this little guy. It's an insect skeleton. How can oh, I not love this little how guy? How did I not perceive that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's look got, at look, it's like perched on somebody's back. Yeah. And it's got these like, spider legs. <laughs> like, I love everything like about it's just, this. It's a nuisance. It's a nuisance. <laughs> it's, a, it's a new. This looks like more than a nuisance. So, like, look, if you live in Duskmorn, you see that thing? That's, I guess, that's as minor as the threat. Get, I guess get off so. Me, I guess you're just like skull bat. <laughs> Okay. So, do you remember in Jujutsu Kaisen? when they have the little uh the fly head demons no 
they're just like the little minor demons that uh -huh. don't matter or like minor, like curses? minor curses i don't know why yeah I yeah oh this is like a fly head yeah 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 oh, because they it's like uh they go to like an abandoned mall yeah kind of, that's what yes, 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 yes like for training purposes like they're nuisances like they don't have enough power to be a real problem <laughs> yeah. like that's what the, you just like swat them you know <laughs> sure it's a wasp tarantula yeah. skeleton could be worse with like stingers on the tips it, of its wings it could wings. actually be so much worse though <laughs> yeah. like this is just a nuisance yeah. you just, yeah. just smack one it. step up and you got a piranha yeah, fly now you like, got a yeah, like now that one has a much better mouth to bite you with yeah i mean well i, I mean know. i think so okay <laughs> so the skull staff snap nuisance has some very intimidating looking uh canine kind of shaped teeth uh -huh. but if you look at the lower jaw there's really nothing going on there you're it right, can't right. chew on you yeah, 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 now yeah. if you go back to the piranha fly uh-huh that thing is going to take a bite and it's, it's oh, going to, yeah. yeah, you're going to suffer some medically significant damage. All right. So yep, 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 I yep. think that is a fair assessment that this is not a nuisance. This is a problem. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> then what are we going to actually take for this? If we want to. Mm, okay. So we have our giant that's, bomb. That's easily the best card. Yeah. Um, it probably doesn't mean playing Valgavoth mm -hmm. unless, yeah, probably But I mean, doesn't. it's really solid. Um, the glimmer is good. It goes best in blue, white. But Again, you know, it, black yeah. white is the place we would play Valgavoth. So I okay. think I think it's the bookworm. The bookworm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're the one that's got 90 plus drafts under your yeah. belt. <laughs> so. Oh, and what, what do we think about? So manifest right. If we get the bookworm, yeah. we desperately want to get every one of these we can. Uh huh. But look at that. I haven't actually noticed oh, the skeleton gestating in the sack at, before. Yeah, I've never really looked at what was stuck inside that membrane. That's uh, cool. That yeah, because I mean, there's the cocoons yeah. of uh, the cult. And there's that white reanimator spell mm -hmm. that's something like emerge from the cocoon, yes. which I kind of it was I think did a mental shortcut yeah. that this was the same thing, but I don't think so because this feels just, so. This one it looks like we're in like a greenhouse setting yeah. or something. We've got yeah. all the plants. Like mm -hmm. this feels more like a carnivorous plant situation that like it we has yeah. grabbed something and is digesting <laughs> it. <laughs> yep. Okay. Maybe this is what Audrey 2 does when yeah, she catches things. Possibly. All right. So let's take the bookworm and, okay. and move on. Next pack. Oh, man. Ooh, okay. Let's There's see a merge from the cocoon. Yeah. That's what I was referencing. Yeah. See, I don't think that's what's going on in the other one. Oh, no. Uh, there's uh, Cursed Windbreaker, Cursed your Wind favorite. Cursed Windbreaker, my favorite card. Yeah. What, what is your, um, your EDH deck that you're working on around this? <laughs> So I'm building a really silly uh, deck. It is going to be commanded by Atraxa. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, you know, very well-known, powerful commander. Mm -hmm. I picked her primarily for the color identity. Yeah. And then it kind of spiraled into, like, well, it's just funny. So it's a Phyrexian dress-up party featuring uh -huh. Atraxa and all the Praetors minus Urbrask, because he's not invited. And I've got all... I'm looking to get as many equipments and, like, article of clothing, accessory, you know, shoes, boots, capes, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, that they can wear to a dress-up party. Yeah. And nice. Yeah, it's, well, is it gonna be but good? Particularly the like the egregious, yeah, like, particularly fashionable... like the silliest ones. Like obviously, this was the inspiration. I was, I was like, trying to get you to call it fashion crimes. It is, it is yeah. gonna be, yeah. uh kind of criminal. Yeah, good. Okay. Uh, definitely gonna do some fashion crimes because yeah, like my goal is like I want to put Jenga Taxius in the cursed windbreaker. Nice. You know, I want to make a Shildred wear the bridal gown mm -hmm. from uh, Crimson Vow. Like that, that's the the level. You know, Yogmoth's gonna be there too. I've got all kinds of dress up ideas for him. Yeah. Um, but I could, I'm going off on a tangent. So, fair, fair. <laughs> um, so what are we taking from this pack? Are there any things that it's, we want to point out? I, I love the unsettling twins. Oh yeah. Um, like the this clear is shining such an amazing shining reference and the shadow behind these girls. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's not what they really are. Yeah. I love that. In it's, case you were wondering. In case you were concerned that these two twins were not unsettling enough. Look at their shadow. I never even noticed the flavor text. Yeah. Come play with us. That's, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely love this one. I like Innocuous Rat because that mm -hmm. the art here like does the job yeah. of what the the name is. It's like, oh, it just looks like oh, oh that's huh. What's yeah. going on? Yeah, like there? at first glance, oh it's just a rat, but like the more you look at it, there's some stuff happening mm -hmm. toward the background that are less rat like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 
something And it is more. just typed as a rat, so that's interesting. But yeah. yeah um, Bloomberg rats, or not Bloomberg, Duskmorn rats, just a little different. Mm -hmm. um, and then I love the, is it the Anthropede? Yep. Yeah, this is, I, I'm a huge fan of centipedes, so anything that has even a remotely centipede body plan in this does. game, <laughs> it's like, I get excited about that. Yeah. But I just love, like, how many hands this thing has. Yeah. And it's got a head with, like, two skulls off to the side yeah two extra skulls extra skulls like there's the normal skull there's the regular which head, no i mean if it's an then, insect it probably doesn't normally yeah, have a skull i mean <laughs> these are almost like pauldrons the way they're yeah. like situated on the the not shoulders <laughs> and then it's competing with uchwenbach our boy yeah for a number of hands yeah so many so many hands i, I love this yeah uh we had an opponent or i had an opponent in one of my games in um in Vegas that was so shocked that I main boarded that card because it just totally screwed up his yeah. room plan. Because it's not good in no, draft No, but normally, I picked but, it because... But like, sometimes you gotta do things for different reasons. Yeah, for both did, those reasons. Yes, exactly. And so like, I did that because I was like, this makes me happy. I'm yeah. gonna play this card. Yeah, that's joy. And he was just like... That's the same reason when he first picked Valgazaw. Yeah. yeah, and he was just like, why would you have that in your main board? And, but you know what? Hey, <laughs> to mess moment, with you. <laughs> in the moment, it was exactly what I needed. That's so. amazing. <laughs> uh this is cute ah, i love that little goblin i have no other observations yeah i yeah i just like it yep um i think like playing to win mm -hmm. that's easily the right card it's just yeah. really good and it plays really well with yep. bookworm um if we want to live the vagabond dream it's this but mm. honestly this should wheel but i think let's take the windbreaker yeah i think yeah. like there's a scenario here it's pretty easy to play Sultai, Jund, or Teemer. Like, okay. you can just do those things. Green usually has enough fixing you can mess with. And there's the audio drop. So here we are in the present slash future. Still don't know how to conceptualize that. Yeah. And on to pack one, pick four. Let's see. What are we looking at? Um... I guess I'll, I'll get ahead of us and uh, mention that <laughs> we didn't end up including the uh, recording any of the gameplay. We yeah. recorded one or two of the games. It's It wasn't that interesting. So what I will do for anyone actually curious how the deck works out is post a link to the 17 lands and you can okay. see how it all went. You can replay it. You at can your look speed. at our, our yeah. gameplay data. But here's Ticket Booth. And we I don't think we had much to say about this yeah, the first I time think, around. I think we kind of rambled. I, I had some comments about how the Tunnel of Hate is just a tunnel with red lights in yeah. it. But it could be a lot spookier. Yeah, like that's, it's just not a lot. Yeah. Ludo has opinions. Um, there's a guy in the ticket booth, but I mean, it's just a dude standing in the ticket booth. So. <laughs> creepy, creepy yeah. shadow. Cautious survivor. Mm -hmm. Kind of Ghostbusters-y. Yeah. And, and probably one of the elves descended from, yes. like in the last of the, the stories, which I think is the main... I don't know if it's a side story of the main canon story. It must be the side stories. It, there's talking about the, the last elves, who I think are like the last free people, as the house okay. finally encompasses the last bastion of nature. Eats the forest, and the elves were there mm. thinking, well, what happened to us? Yeah. That feels like some uh, hmm. some commentary there, it huh? It does, yeah. <laughs> huh. Ah, uh, yes, the Bleeding Woods. They're all so beautiful. I all love the these dual lands in this set. They're, I love the windows and how yeah. they play out and all the different... Apologies if we are. repeat ourselves because we don't necessarily remember what we yeah. said before and didn't, but I love that you can use these for any kind of dreamy dreamscape yes. setting. It doesn't have to be a nightmarish specifically, yeah, but I think it can be. They did a really good job of that. I mean, there are some of them that have kind of an overall spooky vibe, The red-black one, I think, but like, um, it's red-black. They're yeah. always kind of like that. But like, they could still fit, like you said, in like a, any kind of dreamy, like, they kind of would fit in like an Innistrad-themed mm -hmm. deck. There, there's a lot of ways you could use yeah. these. Uh, the Look living the phone and the play thing. We, yeah, we <laughs> Why do we keep back. going back and forth? I don't know. We bounced back and forth between those quite a bit. Yeah. What were we talking about here? I don't know. But we definitely... Okay, so yeah, yeah, definitely how creepy this Yeah, look thing at is. its mouth. Which one? Yeah. Uh, both. <laughs> the, the top one mainly. Specifically the top one. Yeah. But both are not great. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, this thing is... This thing's real creepy. Is it coming out of a creepy box too? It's got yeah, like it looks like it's coming out of a creepy box. So it just creepy so, gift wrapping, so creepy many everything. spikes. Yeah, a lot yeah, more there's spikes like a than doll's the average face toy. sewn onto its tummy. Like mm -hmm. this, is, this is a real creepy looking bear. Yeah, I know people like th there are sub industries like now that make this kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I've seen you some. Good money for that. Um, what are 
they called? Um, I think it's called. I know with model kits, it's like kit bashing where you take multiple kits yeah. and bash them together. <laughs> but some people. <laughs> I know you do that with, like, your Warhammer figurines because yeah. you like this gun and this sword, yeah, but, like, people, this is an entirely yeah, this different... is a whole different thing. This is where you, like, you know, clip the head off of an action figure and, like, glue it onto a spider or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like Toy Story. Yeah, it's the, very Toy Story. The antagonist kid or whatever. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, we... Mm. Yes. Now we know. Now we know what those are. I think I made a comment the first time where I didn't know what the white sheet things are, but now we know they're shroud stompers. Yeah. Crowd stomper leg feats. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that's our the widow's, widow's walk. walk. The yeah. widow's walk. Where so until you we were looking at it in this large resolution, I didn't realize mm -hmm. that's supposed to be outside, which is like yeah. what a widow's walk is. It's yeah. like on top of a roof or a, a balcony around the outside of a roof, but the windows there make it look when it's small like oh those are just the windows on the right. wall from inside but no no those are floating space windows or whatever they are yeah my first Frequently. impression of this was that it was like an interior scene but yeah, yeah this is meant to be outside and then you've got the creepy attic which yeah. is just you know i think attics are just kind of inherently yeah. creepy oh but that one has the extra little creeper in it the does. in the mirror There's back a there long mirror in the back with a little creeper down in the corner uh -huh. <laughs> you some... cannot really see that at card size but you can see it here yep and then, What's next? Yeah, we go back to Don't Make a Sound. I think this is probably where I ramble on a bit about uh, not being sure what those sheet things are. Yeah, and I think it was like, uh, why, Jace? Yeah. I, I did a lot of complaining the first time, and I will continue to do so about yeah. how I really just, I like side stories, and I don't like the main characters so much. Typically, yeah, I'm in the same boat. They just, they don't speak to me. Yeah. I feel like that's not an always thing. It's a current era thing, but I don't yeah. know. Maybe... I don't remember when I was really into following a few particular planeswalkers yeah. around set after set. It's mostly the main characters. I mean, I definitely remember being into Urza's story way back 20 years ago or whatnot. Yeah. But when you have novels and everything, and I just and I also could just be rose tinted goggles, you know? Yeah, or, that's or, true. Or uh, sunglasses of Urza tinted. Sunglasses, yeah. Urza's sun tinted. Yeah. Urza's transition lenses. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely going oh yeah we've got a uh here's the here's johnny um mm -hmm. shining moment yeah we've already looked at the yeah. the twins right yes that was going. earlier on and then we've got we talked a little bit about the machete the conductive machete yeah. um the the character just looks really flat to me and her hand looks malformed like the her forearm is too narrow and her fingers are really kind of chunky mm. and i don't know what's going on here there's just something weird about the proportion that doesn't seem purposeful yeah. Like, there's a lot of wrong anatomy very much yeah, on purpose. Yeah, there's some very intentional wrong like, anatomy in this set. <laughs> yeah. Classic. I don't, I don't think we really talked about it yet, but um, at some point in this, in the first recording, we did talk about how the razor can kind of just don't appeal to either of us particularly. Yeah. Yep. Very, very true. I like this one, too. The Peculiar Lighthouse. This is really Oh, pretty. all of these duels are beautiful. But yeah, my main beef with the Razor Kin is that what they're referencing are generally f slasher films yeah. where there is one antagonist mm -hmm. who is menacing throughout the entire plot and, you know, is killing people left and right. And it's just that one. They're unstoppable. Yeah. But when they, it's just represented by one of many cards and there's just a bunch of them, it kind of loses mm -hmm. its... Yeah. yeah, you know, I actually just had an idea that, you know how they have the alt art within the set where you have the same art, but there's a spooky creeper yeah. hiding somewhere in the art? I think that would have been kind of a neat way to do something like that. Like if instead of the Razorkin being like a color faction of red, black, yeah. if there was like one dude who just kept showing up in different artwork and it's yeah. like, this is the one guy yeah. <laughs> that we're worried about. That would have been kind of fun. Um, kind of like a spooky Where's Waldo? <laughs> or like, you don't want to find Waldo? Uh. Uh. <laughs> Hide from Waldo. Yeah, so here's one. We I think this is probably where we're talking about that, actually, yeah, yeah. is we have this, like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre dude on the Boiler Bilge's Ripper. And, mm. yeah, there's just... It's not as scary when there's just a bunch of them. It's just... Yeah. It, it has a different effect. Even if they got pretty good 
like big stats. It just yeah, uh, like it just doesn't have that same feel. There's one exception, but we'll get to yeah, him. I don't well, wanna, he I don't comes up later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> also, they all kind of feel all the Razorkin for the most part feel like they belong in. Uh, they could just like interchangeably fit into the Rakdos Guild on Ravnica. Yeah. I don't want to miss the opportunity. Oh yeah talk about how cool the that is of I, and it's like the the antlers kind of look like the mast of a ship with those yeah. ropes and everything yeah this one's kind of freaky you you compared it to taxidermy yesterday yes. yeah this reminded me of a taxidermy gone wrong sort of thing where you have like the elk body but then the human faces and that's how it represents yeah. immobility and i was assuming it was just like there's a lot of wrinkles on the mm -hmm. face that it's more of an age thing was yeah where the fear was but i don't know yeah because uh taxidermy actually refers specifically to preservation of things with skin like that because the it like the root words have to do with the skin manipulation oh wow um, like the dermataxi yes yes Dermot. uh so oh. yeah that's kind of <laughs> yeah um so yeah, that's kind of what this made me think of is like, oh, like the spirit or the entity or whatever this is has been like taxidermied and now they're mm. immobile, like a, like a hunting trophy, like they've been yeah caught in place. There's that spirit. Oh yeah. So, cool spirit. See, we we have had something funny to say about this. So the smoky lounge is on fire, and then the misty salon is like the aftermath. Yeah. Of the. <laughs> The literally yeah. on fire because initially i was like oh a smoky lounge we're like hanging like out like a in smoking our, lounge we're like hanging out in our smoking jackets yeah. and it's all posh and like no it's literally on fire <laughs> maybe leave <laughs> yeah maybe we should go <laughs> and then the misty salon they're like having a seance for all the people that passed away in the smoky lounge so yep. <laughs> they're trying to figure out who started the fire yeah I thought we were talking about what to actually pick to like probably yeah do well I think here. we're talking about like, do we choose unable to scream? Do yeah. we grab something else? I think we end up grabbing unable to unable yeah. to scream. The recurring theme of that I think was are we going to be able to play Valgava? Are we going to yeah, be able to play Valgava? Yeah, at this point we were still very much living the dream of like we could play Valgava. Yeah. Beasties. Um. Oh yeah, the beasties. I love the beasties and I love the beastie short story and I was Yes kind of disappointed at how few beasties there are like i as fan they're yeah. as fans should be low on beasties it mm -hmm. just should because they're supposed to be these rare protectors yeah but i love that one he's in a circus and I he's got his bed him. with him he's hiding under the bed but he's not doing a very good job but he's doing his best yeah and that's what matters i love the christmas lights yeah i do too that was the one of the the pet models in arena but i didn't think those models captured the feel of the beasties very well because they're yeah. like they're kind of chibi yeah like they're, like those those companions uh -huh. usually are and beasties are so they're being be a mythic they're yeah. big yeah they're big chonkers they're big heckin chonkers and that doesn't get conveyed well with a little yeah pet. it would be kind of cute though if they had made like a baby beastie yeah you know and that's kind of what they are, are but they? like, okay. but it feels like, no, because it feels like the, the one with the Christmas lights is clearly referencing that card. And yeah. so like, no. Yeah. See, I feel like it'd be cuter if they made it like a baby beastie where like you have to care and nurture the baby beastie until what if that's just what loot to take is? care of you. Oh, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no. Beastie? No, because beasties have yeah. those hideous faces that oh. cause their, their, um, the person uh, they're taking care of to flee in terror. Loot's and... face is kind of hideous depending on who you talk to. Oh well, yeah. Depending. <laughs> I think most people find it saccharine, yeah, kind of nauseating, but yeah. not, not hideous. Not hideous. Not terrifying like this guy's face. Yeah, this guy, this guy is terrifying. Yeah, if that was the one Razorkin, that would have been pretty cool. Yeah, like I don't want him chasing me anywhere. Yeah. What if this is just the one card where we could actually see what it looks like? Yeah, usually it's see, just... that's kind of what I would prefer. Is like if you don't get to see the the guy's face, and then yeah. like there's one card where you finally get to see what it is. Yeah. I really like this Terramorphic Expanse art, which has yeah. this very... Escher. Yeah, like, MC Escher nightmare architecture going mm -hmm. on. That's super cool. I've actually grabbed a few of these for decks just because I like this Terramorphic Expanse art. Like, picked art. it up specifically? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because I just like the colors. I love the Command Tower from Dustmourne. Oh, it's so cool looking. You have to show me because I can't remember yeah. what it looks like. I think we're making the decision about what to actually yeah, play again. Yeah, we're like, trying to make good kind of choices. That's good. Yeah. Oh, what are we looking at here? More, more of the Razorkin showing up. That's the story spotlight, uh -huh. where uh, Winter there in the background saves Kaito and the Wanderer from that Razorkin. And then we have the Bear Trap in this pack. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bear Trap, Bear Trap. 
Which I think we talked a little bit about how, um, so we've got all this like 80s and 90s nostalgia stuff in this set. Mm -hmm. This bear trap is kind of a like, looks older. Victorian? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah if we zoom in on a second here. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of antiquated looking. It's got like looking. filigree. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wish we had. Okay. Did we spend here. more time on it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially in the center, it looks like it has mm -hmm. a filigree on it, and that's just I very... love, I do really like how disgusting that thing looks. Like, it's all rusty and yeah. stained. It's reused. It's used. This <laughs> it's is not, not a, a new bear deal. trap. Uh, the Ghostbusters yeah. gear. And this is a nice, uh, so this is a common element in spooky stories, is the equipment or the tools or whatever you have is not working. The car suddenly won't start. Yeah, the car yeah. won't start. <laughs> you yeah. your, your ghost catching machine has malfunctioned. <laughs> and you can see there's a scary face. If I don't think we go back to it, but yeah. uh, there's a scary face of like the spears escaping. Yeah. And the art for that one. Oh, uh, there, there it is. is. Oh, I, ha I had never seen that. Yeah. Truly. So wow. It's like, Escaping the containment. Containment breach. Yeah. Good catch. Huh. The toothy windows yeah. in the background. I like that element. So many toothy windows. I think we, we've talked about on the channel a number of times how much I like teeth. Uh, it came up a lot <laughs> in, um, in All Will Be One. Because there were so many teeth. Yep. Um, yeah, I really like the teeth representation here on Duskmorn. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I think this is my favorite dual land. Are we going to come hover over it? Please hover over that. Past self, come on! <laughs> do it! This is so weird waiting for our past selves to do the thing. I know. <gasps> oh, there, there we go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh. oh, come on. I think this is my favorite of the dual lands, this art wise. This very good. I like this. I, one I love the little points of light there, which mm -hmm. I think are something creepy. Like maybe they're the, yeah. the piranha flies. They might be. Um... Cellar spawn, even? Oh, no, 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 no. They're way no? too small for that. They look like... Because, I mean, we can see the size of the shack. And these things are much smaller than that. They're okay. like something that could easily fit in the I window. I think I was kind of... I was misunderstanding where they were. Oh, well, you think in, they were, like, yeah, approaching from behind? Yeah, I thought they were, like, behind. far away. But, yeah, if they're closer... I think they're then, between us, the yeah, viewer, and the maybe shack. Maybe there's some kind of little, like... Um, yeah. I can't think of anything in the set that looks like this, but like the like firefly esque. Yeah, that's what I was thinking yeah. about. I think the piranha flies are the closest okay. thing we see rendered close up, and everything in this plane tends to be horrific. So I yeah. assume those are something They're horrific. They're probably but, scary. But I like there. this, like this fungus where the hands, <laughs> yeah. like the hand shape. Why does it need hands? Because everything has too many hands on Duskmorn. That's kind of a, a theme. Yeah. Lots of hands. Too many parts. Parts in the wrong yeah. place. Parts in the wrong places. Too many parts. I like this wallpaper too. Are those moths? I kind of look like I expect moths. everything I to be tell. covered in moths in this set because that's part of the narrative. The narrative. Being they they that... look kind of moth shaped. But I don't know. <laughs> clammy prowler. I love the clammy prowler. Look at that thing. Yeah. Do you think it captures the clamminess? Look at its upper I think it shoulder could there. Could be clammier. Yeah. It looks a little moist. Yeah. Yeah. Into the enigma. Only cool thing about that is God, I'm really down on the characters. Like, quit showing us name characters. <laughs> Um, like, ugh. <laughs> she's fine, I guess. She's all right. But I like the filigree on the on the. That's a nice the mirror window, mirror door window thing. Uh, enter the enigma. I wonder if that is actually a story spotlight from when they actually enter the house from Ra uh, Ravnica. Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's the idea. Maybe. Because the door just shows up on a Ravnican street, because Valgavoth's realized he can just kind of make portals appear on other oh, planes now, neat. thanks to the the whole Omen Path deal. Shroud Stomper. Yeah. That was my the card that was cursing me because I keep asserting I played so many drafts. I ended up playing <laughs> 90 drafts on, or 90 events tracked by 17 lands, so mm -hmm. through Arena, and then a few in-person yeah. events. So probably like 95 total, but this, it took me like halfway through the format before I even saw this pass or was oh, able wow. to play it at all. I think I've played nearly every card. I got card. to play it in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels really it's good. It's a cool but... card. I even got to reanimate it. Yeah, that's the best. That felt great. Yeah. yeah, this was the moment where I think we realized what is depicted on that other card with Jace. Right. Um, those white shroud things are shroud stompers. And also that I noticed, like, the, the sort of distant mm -hmm. one, it's sucking someone up into that thing. Yeah, they're not just, like, stepping on you. They're pulling you up into the tunnel. Yeah. Of the leg. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't 
know what they do to you in there, but it looks not it, great. It feels like um, Boba Fett falls into the Sarlacc. Into the Sarlacc pit? It's kind of like yeah. a reverse Sarlacc yeah. experience. Like, it feels <laughs> the like reverse Sarlacc the reverse experience. The reverse Sarlacc experience. <laughs> Feel like that's a band that plays Something. some like really experimental industrial <laughs> noise. <music. laughs> yep. Attack in the box. This is just yeah. a spooky Jack in the Box. This is. Is this my favorite of the toys? Oh, is it? I think mine is the phone. I like the living phone. Yeah, they're very different vibes. Yeah. Well, actually, no, they're just kind of different vibes. Yeah. And then these glitch are ghost. the glitch ghosts. You can really see it on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the glitchiest looking of the glitch yeah. ghosts. <laughs> what are you doing, Stalker? Failmark Leech! Leech! I get really excited about leeches. This is true. You get very excited about a lot of organisms that most people do not. I do. Uh, <laughs> I do. That is but true. also, the, the you also like cats and dogs, too. I do. You just like, yes. you like organisms. I just like organisms. Yeah, they're, they're great. Just like critters. Mm -hmm. I'm wearing my jacket today with my grub life patch. Very nice. I like grubs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think at this point we're trying to figure out what to pick out of this pack. Yeah. We're still kind of on the Valgavoth stream. Yeah, like here, maybe we reanimate Here Trail I was Stalker. regretting yeah. not taking the um, Emerge from the Cocoon mm -hmm. and having committed to that because I think I really leaned into that on the one of the free drafts in yeah. the Midweek Magic and had a blast with it, but I'm too sensitive about my gems to play a generally suboptimal archetype. It just okay. takes a lot of risk to like yeah. get into no, black that's white fair. in that that's format. Fair. Yeah, and I think we breeze through these pretty quickly because now we've uh. Yeah, we're getting down to the dregs now. Mm -hmm. We're like we're not really good, realistically going to play any of this stuff. Yep, yep. I think we take the survivor. Yeah. Or okay. do we take the? Team? Maybe I was thinking, oh, this has higher upside. Yeah. Yeah, because... We're still kind of like, oh, we could do Sultai at this point. Yeah, the Cautious Survivor is barely playable. It ended up in the format. Mm -hmm. Okay, we take uh, the teeth. Pick ten. Oh, yeah. Just a fine piranha fly. That's a beautiful piranha fly. We love that piranha fly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is a... This looks like a Saw reference with the right. creeper on the different TV screens. Yeah, and I hadn't even perceived the TV screens yeah. until you pointed them out. They're all up in the in the title. Uh, let's play a game. Oh yeah, the I got that reference. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, this is clearly the saw reference. Yeah. But somehow I just didn't see that there's those screens and that like face close yeah. up. Which I guess he's probably one of the Razorkin or something. That's, I guess. Yeah. I don't know who that's supposed to be. Yeah. They're probably just not that specific. Mm -hmm. Huh. Are we gonna? I don't know if we talk about the nuisance again. We probably don't. No, because I think we hit that before we had yeah, lost just, audio. I wasn't sure. You just really like it? I just really like it. Yeah. I mean, look at it. Yeah, it's a tarantula bat. Yeah. Intersection. Yeah, that's quite the intersection of your... Right? <laughs> your proclivities. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> Another stocked researcher. Yeah, nothing, nothing new to discuss there. Yeah. We Probably here the either. Yeah. Moving on to some new stuff. And we'll have a whole new pack to look at oh, look, and talk about cool. Asfan. Right. What's the Asfan? Of, this is pack two, pick one of survivors. I think what there's the I cheerleader, the two escort. In this one. Yeah, because yeah, uh, we didn't count main characters. Yeah, they're just there. Oh yeah, and we talked about. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about again. What are those things? And then we realized these are cellar spawn. Yeah, these creepy little. Well, they're not so little, but these creepy things. Yeah. In this one, they're around. little in terms of being human size, whereas yeah. in like the Roller Crusher ride, they're Titan size. Yeah, there's like Attack on Titan monsters. And we'll definitely see. I don't think we got into it yet. The uh, the black common removal spell that has yeah. the huge one. I don't think we got there yet. But yeah, these yeah. look like they're person sized. Yeah. So I guess they come in different sizes. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I think they're basically you know, Valgavoth's brain worms. <laughs> yeah. Like like he spawns them direct. Well. He spawns most of this stuff out of his mind. No, but yeah. Razorkin started Survivors. Uh -huh. The Cultists started Survivors. So some of these things, and the the Beasties are presumably descendants of yeah. animals or dogs or something. Oh yeah, the Beastie Beatdown. Yeah, so this is a Beastie, like, just slugging a Cultist, I guess? Yeah, yeah. And I was really confused about this before we saw it at this size, because 
that mask mm -hmm. on the beastie because beasties wear masks that's just right. part of what they do but i didn't read that as a mask i mm -hmm. read it as kind of just a big hulk and dude like a, yeah. a w uh world wrestling foundation yeah, just like a big dude dude um, with just going Rawr, or something yeah, but no, this no is a beastie, a and there's and a kid then, riding on yeah, the back there's a kid on the back and then we determined that this was a cultist based on the clothes yeah yeah i think that's right oh yeah Oh, yeah. This is where we talked about Dune. Yeah, and I've forgotten the name again. Oh, no, no. Uh, Baron Harkonnen. Harkonnen. I spent like a whole minute yeah. trying to remember that name. That's yeah. who this looks like. Yep. But then uh, I also realized... Oh, so it's Fear of Imposters. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be someone turning out to be a monster instead of that. But the red hair at the top and the little buckle on the shoe makes it look like the Lucky Charms leprechaun yeah. to me. What if what if this is what's secretly under the Lucky Charms leprechaun's skin? You this is like this is a universe is beyond like yeah. Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> what if this is what his secret is? Oh. <laughs> hard pass <laughs> yeah no thank you yeah um again we've got too many mouths uh this is an overarching again yeah. you know just extra body parts in places they don't belong so who is this person in the mouth? i guess it's a survivor and they've just realized oh mm -hmm. my companion is an imposter it's not who i thought they were it's not i thought i was tooling around with a serial mascot and yeah. lo and behold lo and behold i am tooling around with a bunch of mouths yeah this is not what i signed up for yeah how awkward yeah I hope it wasn't like a first date. Oh, yikes. <laughs> I hate mean, when this happens. Yeah, I just gotta hate when this happens. <laughs> Exorcise! So yeah, this is a cool one. Um, I like how we've got this little machine in the middle, and you can kind of see a distorted face on the right side. It's I like it's not being sucked in. Oh, there's two of them. To the there's like a big one in yeah. the lower, but then a little one. Yeah, yeah. They're like being sucked into the containment, and then it looks really peaceful on the other side me so yeah i viewed the direction as the opposite like the mm -hmm. the peaceful side it's like there was a spirit in disguise and it's being yanked out of its hiding place oh. so it's like being pulled out of a tv or something that was trying to haunt mm -hmm. and it's like no you're being i don't know what's happening to them they're being x-rayed they're being <laughs> that's that what happens sense. if you x-ray a ghost <laughs> uh <laughs> get, get a tan <laughs> That'd be cool if you x-rayed a ghost and it showed up briefly like on, over the, to the human eye without, a, you know, any additional, <gasps> yeah. you know, just for like 15 minutes it just luminesces or Do something. Do not start that as a rumor though because the number of like <laughs> dangerous experience people are doing. Like, <laughs> Did you know that if you steal your yeah. doctor's x-ray machine and take I it mean, home? I mean, I have like, access flash. to an x-ray machine at work. Don't do this. <laughs> 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 Don't do this experiment. Uh... The design on that exorcism machine, though, I think we noticed kind of seems to be referenced in other places. Yeah, uh, we we'll see, see we see survivors holding something similar to that yeah. in a few other cards. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Quit looking at her. We don't, <laughs> we we don't, don't care about we her. We don't want to take the Wanderer. She's fine. <laughs> I don't know if we mentioned Thorn Spire Verge. The, like, I think it was in our pack one also. Pack one, pick yeah. one as an option. We took, of course, Valgavoth because it's so cool. But all of the Verges and the Duel Oh, yeah, we just, talked about this guy for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Bit. The slavering instead of slavering. I I've heard multiple content yeah. creators call it slavering. I think it's slavering because it, it's yeah, like slavering. we talked about how it's like adjacent to slobber. And you, yeah, yeah. You, know, you can see. And the, it basically means slobbering. The drool yeah. coming out of this thing's mouth. I, I think I looked up I looked up the etymology mm -hmm. of it. And it is it derives from the same root word as slobber. But, you know, slobber, slobber, it's almost the same yeah. sound. And at some point those diverged. Etymologically, yeah. not, not entomologically. Yeah. Etymologically. etymologically. Uh, we need to do a video on words we learned playing magic because mm -hmm. there's, there's, I've got some good ones. Praetor. Yeah. Bivouac. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one that's on two magic cards. Yeah. You have something to say about the hands? Um, yeah, I love the hands in this one. <laughs> Again, we got some more hands. Um, so this kind of reminds me, there's a couple cards that call back to this for me. But I have a core memory of playing one of the really early Zelda games. I can't remember which one because this enemy appears in a couple of them. But there is this disembodied hand that like falls out of the ceiling in one of the like first couple of Zelda games ever. And it's just an insta-kill that like snatches you and yeah. transports you back to the beginning of the dungeon. 
Uh, and that's kind of what this reminds me of. These are smaller mm -hmm. than the Legend of Zelda enemies, but that's kind of what this feels like. They're like reaching out and they're going to like snatch you and pull you into some kind of portal. Yeah. And it's probably not going to be nice just because of where we are. It's oh, probably no. not going to be a nice surprise. There's very few nice things yeah. on this. Uh, and the things that are nice, they're just there to trick you into. Yeah, it's this. It's the imposter. It's yeah. It's going to yeah. trick you into thinking. Maybe. Maybe those hands uh -huh. go with those mouths. Oh, the numbers kind of add up. So that, if you if you were to upsetting. sort it all out, yeah, you'd have an yeah. equal number of. They're like gone. promising you free cereal, but this is what you get instead. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what we were originally talking about that made us come back to this and talk a lot more. I don't know. <laughs> I think we were talking about this card, whether or not it's actually good in the format, because oh. you had some commentary uh. about different creators either being divided on liking this card yeah, that's or right, not that's really right. liking this card. Sam Black had a, a yeah. bit on one of his drafting archetypes uh, episodes where he was talking about it being solid if you frame it the mm -hmm. right way, but I don't remember the nuance, and uh, just listen to Sam Black. He's real smart. Yeah, here we are back at the Thornspire Verge. Yeah. This is, again, I just really like all these lands. Yeah, I think I actually like the look of the the art for the, the commons more than the Verges yeah. in general. I agree with that. Not for a way that I can, or not for a reason I can really articulate well, or at all. Pack two, pick two. Oh, yeah, the uh, nowhere to run. When we look at that, that's where we saw the same devices yes, and exercise. This has the little exorcism machine. Yeah, Tyvar and Zimone fighting stuff. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, Again, main character stuff. I like Zimone more than most of the other main characters. And actually, Tyvar, I would not have expected to like, but the author loves him so much, and she talks about <laughs> how he's such a himbo in yeah. her DVD extras that I've come to love him, like, through her, yeah. vicariously. But yeah, there in the background is the exercise yeah. device. The exorcism device? The exorcism device, what do you which think appears is to be not functioning right now. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like it's doing a very good job of exercising. It shorted out and released the. Yes, uh, it has released little, the demons. The Oh, that's right. These are the minor curses from yes. JJK, from yes, Jujutsu these, Kaisen. These are the minor curses from Jujutsu Kaisen. These are the little. Uh, there's a couple things in this set that kind of remind me of the little fly head curses. Yeah, yeah. So, so here they are. If you want to see these in real life, you just go to Japan yeah. and go to an abandoned mall. Yeah, that's a great and, place to you know, find them. <laughs> maybe hit up shibuya while you're there i don't know yeah sure <laughs> that, that'll go fine yeah surely. do whatever you feel like <laughs> um this was, i like the glimmers this was this was yeah. a cool one yeah i love them i didn't actually well. realize it was a fox at first even it looks though like it's a typed as a fox i just saw it as a cat visually like the enduring curiosity is 100 100 yeah. definitely a cat yes. but this one looks like a cat and i've always thought it was mm -hmm. until we enlarged it here and yes and said, then oh, i've no. actually read the creature type yeah. like, oh yeah so here is another one where i think in the original recording i bring this up later mm -hmm. but i love this card and it reminds me of again back to jujutsu kaisen it reminds me of mahito's power yeah. and what he can do um, and you can see, I didn't see this until we blew up the picture because I was so focused on the sewer baby on the right side uh, that I didn't see the person and the DNA strands that yeah. are like getting transfigured into this monster. Yeah, it's like the, this is the visual, the art of counterspell. Yeah. It's like this, the spell was going to create a humanoid yeah, so like but now it's been twisted yeah. and like oh nope you're not gonna yeah, get a and human. the art the art that's right the, this art looks like it's representing both of those abilities yeah. happening the the spell is countered and then it turns into something else yeah but for, i guess for mechanical balance reasons you can only do one but it's well really and cool. it's it's brilliant because you but get the counter but then you're manifesting dread you i need you to say more about cellar babies sewer babies sewer babies, sewer yes. babies. so uh let me explain sewer babies real quick um, this is a pet term that I created to describe creatures that look like this, which I think are really cute. So going back to my excitement about organisms that other people do not necessarily yeah. like. This is a prime example. Yep. Um, I tracks. can show you a picture of the card that started this. It's called Sewer Nemesis, but it is a specific art for Sewer Nemesis. Okay. And when you see it, like, that is a sewer baby. You know, it's kind of a je ne sais quoi situation where, yep. like, this is a sewer baby. Got it. Um, there may be more. I'll point them out if we see more sewer babies in this draft. Very good, very but good. But please feel free to steal this term, use it, popularize it. 
Um, see, this is not a sewer baby, but I really like it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, me too. Not enough eye creatures in the game. There are a few. There are a few. I'd like to see more. Yeah, but I think some things it's nice that they slow roll them out. Yeah. They're just, you know, you it, get one a year or two. It's exciting when it's like, oh, there's yeah. an eye. Yeah. And I love the spider legs. This is a well-read eye. Yeah. Also very big. I didn't think about this the first time, but like, yeah. look how big it is compared to the bookshelf. Yeah. <laughs> It's like that size. Yeah. This is another really cool. I really like the fears. Mm -hmm. I really like this very uh, lanky greyhound monster. Mm -hmm. It's okay. And I like how its face opens the wrong way. That's yeah. real interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely captures the fear of being hunted. I like the ears. The ears I kind of want to scritch them, though. I do kind of want to scritch them. I want to pet this like, dog. I will die, but... I think it'd be worth it. You choose your own yeah. destiny. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say choose your own adventure. But... <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> but yeah, like, I want to pet this dog. Yeah. <laughs> you pet that dog? I want to pet that dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's jumping over. That's right, there's a glimmer light on the yeah, ground? Yeah, I think that's what that is. And maybe one of those exorcism devices? Possibly. <laughs> Boo! Jump scare! <laughs> that i don't know when i first saw this card like yeah. in the early previews i just cracked up yeah. and i've continued to be really entertained like by it this. This it's such good flavor because it's like it's actually what the... it does too because it's a combat trick yeah. and it just suddenly appears and surprise yeah or, I, I love the flavor text <laughs> yes. best flavor text on the set uh-huh i love ramp spells this isn't that cool of art though i mean it's fine mm -hmm. it's just like it's there's okay. not much to say about it's it it's okay i like the tree in the middle mm-hmm I like, yeah, yeah, that's good. And that's good, too. Take the sewer, take baby. It. Take, take the sewer, baby. Take it. Take it past self. Get it. Do it. <laughs> I think I'm just talking about how great Adopt it is. the sewer, baby. I'm talking about how great it is with other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, but if we run Val No, off. just get the sewer, baby. <laughs> you didn't say it yet like that yesterday. No, I yeah. didn't. You were being more polite. Yeah. Yeah, you, this is better. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's a blessing well we recorded on a weekend i was yeah. like all relaxed and stuff i've been yeah. at work for two days yeah you got some <laughs> stress to i've got expunge. some i've got some un uh unfiltered rage to share yeah 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 uh, <laughs> so take the sewer baby take the sewer baby <laughs> <laughs> did we do it uh, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, okay. Anyway, what do we have here? We got a <gasps> centipede. That's what we got here. Flush I love brewer. the flush brewer. It is your speed. It is my speed. Yeah. I love how it's like kind of creeping up. Like yeah. it wants to go under the something. It looks like that's somebody's sleeve. Oh, symptoms of a burrow bite include fevers, chills, gangrene, subcutaneous writhing. <laughs> and if you're lucky, death. <laughs> This oh, a growing me... urge to eat the flesh of the living. I missed yeah, that Yeah, you kind of glossed over that. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, you know. <gasps> oh, best gremlin. I love the gremlins. I want to be friends with that yeah. guy. Like, look he can look him. here and eat my stuff. Well, I got a lot of cards in here. Yeah, he's going to chomp him. He can't come in this room. Okay, you got to keep him out of this room. Yeah, okay. Just put him in a room with a bunch of candles. He yeah, likes that. Clearly. He definitely won't start a fire. I kinda, I, now I want to buy a candle. <laughs> Just like that, that mm. wax, right? Like the little paraffin candy bottles that you can yeah. just like chew well, on. Oh yeah, I don't want the taste, but I want okay. the texture. Exactly, yeah, the mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Fear of Infinity? I love this. This is so cool. Ouroboros. Yeah, this is just really cool art. Like every time I've seen this, it catches my eye. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I like that it has a spout for evil spirits. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> a spout. Ah, yes, oh, Lady yeah. D. That, what is her actual name? Lady D. Oh, it's really just D? It's yeah, not it's short Lady, I, I think it's Dimitrescu. Oh, okay, that sounds right. Yeah, but they like, call yeah. her Lady D. In, it's Resident Evil Resident five? Evil Village. I think oh, it's number okay. eight? Seven oh, or eight? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. they've gotten up there. I'm but, uninformed. Yeah, she's the very tall vampire lady. Yeah. What were we looking at here? Oh, oh we're reorganizing. Like I think we were trying to figure out how much removal we actually have. I was like, have. I'm going to be Paul Cheon and put my yeah. things in a reasonable and way so that I can understand what's going on. We were trying to figure out like how many creatures we'd actually take into. Because yeah. <laughs> at some point, we determined that we don't have that many creatures. Yeah, that's a perennial problem. Yeah. But. Can't have too many. 
Well, and I think I, we made a comment somewhere in here like, oh, I don't know if we're going to get another one of these. And then if I'm right, the next pack has an Unable to Scream in there. That's probably true. But they're really good. It's a great card. I, I, would, just, I, I would be happy with like I'm five. I'm pretty sure we pick it, think like we get FOMO about it, yeah. we pick this, and then are immediately past another one. And we never see FOMO. Yeah. Yep, there it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> There's us making the same observation. Very good. Um, yeah, what are we going to look at here? We got some new stuff to look, look at. Look at something. Oh, yeah, this is kind of... You like this. You I, like the... I like this. I think it's a neat take on the... I like how they illustrate what looks like the thoughts, like the arcane symbols and stuff that's coming out of this thing's head. Or going into the head. I don't know. Um, but this is a... You control enchanted creature enchantment, mm -hmm. uh, which is a cool thing that blue can do, which I really enjoy. Um... I like to torment our playgroup with that sometimes. Um. <laughs> you speak when we're recording as though you are much more of an arch villain than you actually are. Yeah, I mean, I'm usually sometimes, not. Sometimes well, you, no, like... Usually what happens is I do something everybody hates and then I get knocked out like first or second. <laughs> and so you don't have the opportunity to keep doing things people hate. I don't have the opportunity to hate. keep doing things people yeah. hate because people identify that I'm a problem and then... yeah stop me from being a problem yeah but sometimes weird. i get to actually do some really cool things <laughs> such as the way of playing commander with your friends here's our big seller yeah, spawn yeah this is a large seller yeah. spawn i i think this and the roller crusher ride are my two favorite renditions of that yeah that that survivor's putting up a good fight he really is he is uh he's not i guess going down without that's a the intent of the card isn't it that you know the final vengeance yeah, is the survivor is going to so. die, but they're going to take this huge gonna, thing yeah, out Yeah, because you have to sack a creature or enchantment as an additional cost, which is yep. a really nice, flavorful way to yeah. illustrate that. Seriously, nice work. I didn't yeah. realize that. I'm, this is a benefit of re-recording and looking yeah. at things a second time. Another Razorkin. Yeah. I love that kind of card mechanically. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's just it's just another Razorkin. Like, yeah, okay. Oh, I love the shrewd storyteller. <laughs> this guy looks like he is explaining something really obvious or straightforward, and these two lads are just not getting it, and he is so fed up. Guys, it's right here. Yeah, he's like pointing it out in the book, and they're just like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, very interesting that this is a visually old man. Yeah, like the this... only one. This is the only old man we've seen who has lived this long. Maybe he's an imposter. He, he might be. I like this hand. What do you mean by like? It's neat. Okay. I think it's neat. I like that it looks like it's on a hamster wheel. It does look like it's on a hamster wheel. And so I could just imagine, you know, if you're just walking along trying to survive yeah. in Dustborn, you hear this sound you look around and it's just this hand just going 90 miles an hour on this giant hamster wheel. <laughs> and then it stops. And it looks at you and loves that. Yeah, there's uh, <laughs> too many fingers. Yeah, and the... I don't know, like a fungal infection or if those are warts or anything. It, those are the things that actually bother me. There's things going on. I, yeah, that's what we spend some time on in the original recording, mm -hmm. is that what bothered you the most about this was the bumps yep. on the skin. Like, the hand, I'm not a big fan of the triple mouth. Yeah, <laughs> no. But, like, what <laughs> bugs me is the bumps. Yeah, the fingernails are a little gross, too. Actually, you know they are, yeah. Like, trim that. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm getting self-conscious. Your dentition is beyond reproach, but why we is, have some concerns. Why is it just this one that's nearest to us have the extra long nail? I don't know. So inconsistent. Who is taking, who is this thing's manicurist? Well, Someone's trimming most of them, but not that. I mean, maybe mm. it does it itself and, like, it doesn't have eyes. And <laughs> so, other creatures so got best. all the eyes, so it's just doing yeah, yeah, its yeah. best. Say its name. I really like this card. I had not realized before that the three Altanax mm -hmm. are like crawling around on the face. That's a nice touch. And I like the centipede border on the mirror. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, and this is clearly the reference to the, the Bloody Mary or mm -hmm. the Candyman. Yeah, which is... Uh, if you have not heard of that somehow, uh, <laughs> yeah. there are some... I don't know, is it an urban legend? Yeah. What, do you, what would you call You're that definitely sort of urban thing? Legend. Usually it's something you do in like junior high where mm -hmm. you go into a room, preferably like a bathroom where you can close the door. Turn or like a slumber party, you make yeah. someone go into the creepy yes. bathroom over there, turn off all the lights. It has to be pitch black and then you say the name of the entity while yeah. looking in the mirror three times and it's supposed to summon it. And so. then it'll murder you. 
Yeah. And that's it. Oh, there is that. Um, so for sure, there's a reason people keep doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, but really fun way to incorporate that into magic with this card. Mm. Um, it mechanically works really well. And I like that it does something even if you don't get to three. Yeah. Like you still get an effect. They also have that, you know, absolutely. That made it playable. So yeah. you can actually, it, it ha so I did it like once or twice mm -hmm. out of the 90 things. And that yeah. was a good ratio, but they had that article like legends of dustborn yes. they do that for a lot of things and they had a cool background i think that's how they presented that information about how altanak was this i think this creation of valgavoth but it kind of was a little too independent or something mm. and it's really mad it exists oh no <laughs> that's cool but I, I can hear its up. name from anywhere. Maybe I'm just like remembering uh, a redditor's cool alt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like this take. I, I think I saw that somewhere, but yeah, I like it. It's a good card. It's a good premise. That was a fun actual thing to cast occasionally. Yeah. Really learning experience in why seven is bigger than six in terms of like actually developing card evaluation skills and like it it doesn't seem like that much bigger number yeah. but like on average that means you're casting it two or three turns later because you don't draw an extra land and hit your land drops seven turns mm. in a row normally yeah you do like turns three four and then usually you start missing them occasionally so i can't remember exactly what we had to say about this but i think this is one of the most peaceful looking rooms in the entire set yeah oh yeah it's like one of the basic islands um has that just like the few chairs yeah. and everything it looks like this is in the view from the slimy aquarium like, side this yeah. looks like a really nice great. place to just hang out it looks quiet unless you have was it mega unless you have mega yeah then um i don't know you might not love this because it looks like you can see outside and honestly it looks like there is some very large thing yeah on kind of just right of center up there maybe that's like a enormous sea slug oh that'd be cool <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I like it too. That looks like a place I would I would be happy to hang out for a little while. Strangled Cemetery, like I love yeah. all the duels, but this is the most generic looking of them. Yeah, I think we mentioned that like this could also easily fit in on Innistrad or any number of other spooky sets. Yeah. Kind of like the is it Lanor Waste? It's yeah, the, the pain it kinda has that version vibe. Of that. Yeah. Um they there are mirror not mirrors, uh windows in the very far distance, but at card size like you really yeah. can't see them. Yeah, they're barely perceptible. I'm curious what the... I assume those were referenced in the art prompts because I, they're yeah. so consistently in all of them. I imagine so. Yeah. Well, I guess we were talking about actually taking this card. I think we're still on our Saltai dream right now. Yeah. That was a nice dream. Well, I guess that's a spoiler, but yeah. Yeah, spoiler, we don't go Saltai. Yeah, yeah. Came pretty close. I, I think we actually keep drafting as if we might until like the very last few picks. But there's just enough, enough Simic stuff going on here. Wait, no! Well, we'll see what happens. Some, two, two days ago, and I'm totally confused about what actually happened. Was it only two days ago? It feels like it's been I know. like a week. Time has no meaning. Yeah, it really doesn't. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that was, uh, I think that was, maybe it was. I'm like, what have I done since then? Maybe I, it was three days? I don't know. I think I it was, lost I track of days. my Mantis briefly. Oh, yeah. Poor kitty. Oh yeah, here here we are making educated yep. decisions. Yes. I wonder if we're considering taking the domination. I think I feel like we were mostly torn between <laughs> removal and yeah. either the land mm -hmm. or something else. I forget. I don't think we actually considered the domination very well. I love goat. the possessed goat. <laughs> so the goat has too many eyes. Yeah. Um, but behind the goat. It's difficult to say if this thing is, like, coming up and snatching the goat and making it possessed, or if it is... I think that's what's happening. Yeah, which is just... Which makes it weird that it already has too many eyes. Because I, I initially assumed, oh, it has too many eyes because it is possessed. But I think no. it just has too many eyes. Yeah, I think it's about like, to get... Clearly the card says it starts out unpossessed yeah. and then becomes possessed. So it, I, I think it so. starts as just a 1-1 one, one goat. It just has too many eyes. This is just the number of eyes you have. Yeah. It's like just those weird two-eyed cats. Yeah, like those weird two-eyed cats. You know the ones. That's a... Yeah, we don't have time to explain yeah. that, Andrew. We don't have time to explain... <laughs> if you ever meet us in person, ask us about the two-eyed cat. Ask us about that weird two-eyed cat. I'll know what you're talking about. <laughs> Neglected Manor. This one's yeah. cool. They're all cool. 
I love them. Yeah. I know I say that like there's ones yeah. that I don't like. Well, no, but, but truly, the, the black and green one, though, that's my favorite color combo, it's was kinda, kind of the weakest. It's kind of funny that this one is just called Saw. Yeah. Not like Saw of Vengeance. Yeah. No, it's just a Saw. Yeah. Just like there's just a chainsaw. Just a chainsaw. So I guess they don't plan on having a lot of sets with chainsaws in them. Yeah, I guess that's not going to be a recurring thing. There's a dude. This is a guy. He's very rugged. Yep. Looks kind of like a Last of Us character. Yeah, I can see that. I'm not sure what it is that makes me say that. Maybe just being bandaged up. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And he has like a Casio watch. You suppose it contains ghosts? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> is he like... What's this like bright white here? Is this like you know, reflection or is that glow? I was just thinking glow? about that. I'm like, is that part of his clothes? Is that a reflection? Yeah. I don't know what's going on there. I like all the little gremlins in this. Yeah. I guess they're trying to eat him and he's like, no, I ha this is my hammer. He's holding that one up. like. Yeah. It... <laughs> yeah. That was a real beefy slayer. I mean, he's the yeah. most valuable He's the slayer, most valuable. So. That truly worked out well, like, in-game. It wasn't a, a bomb card, but, like, yeah. in, like, Red Aggro deck, it really pushed damage through. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, that was really well... Mm -hmm. Good tie between name and mechanics. It's like, yeah, of your survivors, this is the dude who makes it happen. What do we have here? First discussion of the Ragged Playmate? Yeah, yeah. so... <laughs> This thing is creepy. Yes. Um, can't tell if it's standing on a body or just an arm. But the most interesting thing about this toy is I think that the patches, mm -hmm. buttons, whatever they are, on the very short torso mm -hmm. are actually the eyes. Yeah. And the the face face up top yeah. it's just like a mimic thing that's the like same a way mimic have like thing. the like, caterpillar that looks yeah. like the snake that's that, that is again. not part of that's not the face i like that and then it just has like knives for fingers yeah you know what it reminds me of um the little finger knives remind me of like a seam ripper yes absolutely yeah but it looks like there are a couple of holes where it used to have Other, fingers yeah. plugged in there they're gone now. <laughs> yeah. It'd be very large for a seam ripper, though, so I have to yeah. assume it's something Well, it's just like a really else. big seam ripper. It's just got, I think they just got meat hooks and crammed them in Probably. there. The, another glimmer from the turn. Tunnels are there. Friendly Teddy. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a few too many eyes and a mouth in not the right place. Yeah. And, yeah. I wonder if, like, turn inside out, if it's trying to do... Something's trying to do that from the inside Maybe. of this. Maybe. Is that the prettiest? Nah, I like. I still like the Simic one more. That's, That's a really good nice one, though. though. I really yeah. like that one too. And it's another one that, like, if you don't look close enough to see the teeth on the inside of the windows, yeah. it doesn't look particularly it, creepy. It doesn't just, really look creepy at all until nice. you look too close at the windows and you're like, "Wow, that's a lot of teeth." Yeah, yeah, yeah. there. That's a lot of teeth. Mm -hmm. A lot of teeth. Surely we had talked about that card earlier, right? Yeah, I think we talked about that yeah. in one of the first few. Here we're just looking at it. I think as an we option. were still evaluating potential. Do we take the surveyor? Yeah. Do we take the teeth? <laughs> the teeth. Teeth. All right, we took it. All right, oh, pick seven out of pack two. Get out. Yeah, Shrukins, Kaido just kind of mm -hmm. brings it down a little bit for me. I don't know if I've ever liked that character really. Yeah. And I don't know why. I like. I like oh, Samurai and Ninjas when they're yeah. related to Ninja Turtles. but Anyway, the Haunted Screen, yeah. I think we, we saw very different things in we this. We saw very different things in this. So this reminded me of the American remake of The Ring, mm -hmm. which was one of the first scary movies that actually scared me. Mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons. I had previously been into scary stuff before that came out and was mostly watching like older scary movies with a lot of practical effects like people in suits that yeah. kind of thing and then i saw the ring and it had never occurred to me until that point that like evil spirits might try to climb out of your tv and 
end your being. Um, but that's what I saw here. And then we've also got the added nostalgia of like this old TV. Yeah. That, so like this is to kind of, me a conjured yeah, poltergeist. Yeah. But like this is kind of like the TV that like was in my house. Oh, growing up. right, right, so right. So that had a very personal. Nice. <laughs> like. Yeah, what's that girl's name samara in the ring like she this is the tv she's gonna crawl out of All right. in, in your nightmares okay. um i didn't know she had a name mm-hmm. is it like canonically revealed within the movie yeah or, i think or... they go into her backstory of like who okay. she actually is and explain oh. her name and like where she came from oh but um yeah, obviously I've never seen it. So. Okay. <laughs> like there's a The Japanese version is super different. It's the same oh. story, but it's told in a more disjointed way where instead of like a, a linear storytelling. Look at those limbs. Oh <gasps> see, not a sewer baby, but yeah. kind of cute in a weird way. Why is it not a sewer baby? I think it's because I can't see a face. Fair. I can't think of any sewer babies that don't have faces. This is all about the appendages. Yeah, this is all about this is they just min maxed appendages, no face. All the hands. Yeah. <laughs> the sound of mucus covered fingers. Yeah, this, this <laughs> thing looks clammy. It does. Maybe even moist. Yeah, it could be. Uh, Do you think anybody <gasps> stopped watching because we said clammy? Probably and not. Moist. We we need to say clammy and moist a lot more for okay, that. Okay, yeah. Uh, this long neck may be kind of clammy and moist. I like this thing. This is my favorite long yeah. neck. This is just has a this is great art for making me feel the sense of urgency yeah. and motion. Like, it's oh, like right there. Yeah, it's coming at it's us. so close. These survivors trying to get to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has that... Uh, I forget which which Nightmare on Elm Street movie has the, the banister suddenly turned yeah. into the Freddy Krueger snake. That, I, yeah, this is cool. That's a That feels adjacent to what's going on here. And the claws are kind of tree-like yeah, too. And so kind it's of just, evil dead. Yeah, yeah. I like... I like the cellar spawn that are just shadows. I like mm -hmm. it when it has that partial shadow there. I guess the uh, one in the acrobatic cheerleader is just a little anticlimactic. We can see him a little too well. Yeah. But... Now, I assumed that this was referencing the Get Out movie yeah. in the title, but the picture doesn't really I have anything to do with that. I feel like, yeah, it's that reference, but yeah. it's a loose reference because yeah. they wanted to, for some reason, include a story spotlight. Or yeah. I don't know if it's even a story spotlight because it's like Kaido's in this thing, but I don't recall him you doing know, anything with Shuriken. I or... think... I think I, I don't really like Kaido because every time I've seen him, he just has this, like, kind of smarmy, like, he's not serious. Like, he doesn't seem like he takes anything seriously. Okay. At least for, like, granted, I don't read the stories. <laughs> I let you summarize them for me. But yeah. just, like, his like his initial introductory art, he just kind of has this, like, I'm yeah. the protagonist. I feel like I wasn't reading the story yeah. whenever he was first introduced or something. I don't know. He, he doesn't really stick yeah. in my mind as very memorable. And, like, like, that may not be his personality at all, but that's what he looks like to me visually. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, he looks like a guy that would try to mansplain a concept that I'm an expert in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's true either, but I'm not going to dis... Yeah, dis like, he just kind of has that yeah. look where he would be like, well, actually, this is how it works. And yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm an expert in this topic. Like, yeah. <laughs> you read one Wikipedia article. That's pink? It sure is. Um, this is so magenta. <laughs> I, I like the high contrast, but there's something about this art that I think kind of doesn't appeal to either of us. Yeah, it feels like indie comic. And it just doesn't fit the rest of yeah, magic art, it fit or especially this, vibe. this era. Of yeah, magic like art. this, it it looks kind of out of place in the as fan. Yeah, when yeah. You pull out all the cards, but I do like the high contrast colors. I'm into that. I don't know that I really understand how it's expressing the card title or thing either. Yeah, um, who is the Lord of Pain? Is that is? Do we know who that is? I don't know. Is that okay, Valdivog? It, it's in. I mean, he's the, the eater of terror, text, but, no. but like I don't know who that is. Yeah, I don't know. I guess is this someone like giving in to the Razorkin side? Probably of so. That's almost certainly because we've got all the is. spikes and the little hook things. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Yep. Yeah, say its name. Sorry, leech. My leeches. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> My that's cabbages. It. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a visual. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a test of, of a person's creativity how much can they squick themselves out with it? yeah oh my leeches 
Yeah, that that, that is a resurrected cultist yep, rising from a tomb. Just, like popping up out of a crypt, I guess. Looks like the the Draugr tombs early in yeah. like the first tomb you go dungeon you go through yes. in Skyrim. That does look very much like that, where they just they're all just laying down in yep, the walls, yep. and you kind of develop that anxiety uh-huh. around dra- Draugr in those yes cells because you don't know which one's gonna wake up. You don't know. There's so, only one way to find so out. So often they just don't. A lot of times they don't. A lot of times nothing happens. Yeah. Zooming through the final picks. Zoom better. <laughs> just looking at Valgavar. Oh, I think this is... Do we still have a shot at running Valgavar? Yeah. I'm beginning to despair. Uh, I got to do it once in the, the format. Actually took Valgavoth in one of the very first drafts ever, and also put that took that room that you win if you start with oh, have eight untapped yeah. rooms or upkeep. Played a ridiculous game where I was one upkeep away from winning with that, then one upkeep away from winning with Valgavoth, and ended up just losing to self mill and yeah. mill myself out. And then That's only in like amazing. the last week of the format did I finally get a like fairly got there Orzoff reanimator deck with a shroud stopper and oh there uh, your favorite the Jolly I, Balloon Man. I hate him I mean I do too he makes me so uncomfortable I'm so not used to you being made uncomfortable by I know, things I don't like him he that it's, it's really, remarkable to me when something me actually so gets there I, I feel like so much. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm made a little less uncomfortable than the average person by stuff in general yeah and like a lot of bugs I'm good with, yeah. the like scorpions put me over the, uh, the line. But you didn't you... like my centipede when I showed you the veil baleful. Like you were oh, curious about gaze. it, but yeah, then yeah. like I made it look directly. Like at I you. want to be the person who's not bothered by things, yeah. but I am not always. Yeah. But yeah. I would say you are less bothered than the average person. I think that's true. I send you lots of bug related yeah, content yeah. that you are not bothered by at no, all. No, I like lots of bugs, yeah. but there's there's a few things that yeah. are cross into the unpleasant territory for me. And I you think... Don't seem to have there's any of them. A, there's a lot of things the balloon man. that... So there's not a lot of things that bug me, but the things that do bug me, bug me a lot. Oh, okay. So like the balloon man, I really don't like him. He makes me deeply uncomfy. Yeah. Certain beverages. Certain beverages, we, yeah. we won't give every random person who watches this that power over you, but no. yeah. Uh, fear of exposure. That's right. I thought <laughs> there were like some some legs in the back, so it was like yeah. walking on all fours. No, I but think no, no, this no. is like a chicken body plan. Yeah, but that's like with creepier too and much cooler. Mouth. <laughs> oh, too much. Well, like, like if it was certainly a chicken, more than oh yes, like more okay. than the average chicken. <laughs> yeah, like we started with a chicken body plan, and then we were like, let's take that mouth slider and push it all the way up to like fifteen. <laughs> And then add teeth. Yeah. And some lost souls. We're in character creation mode and we're like, can we get some lost souls in there? Cool. Most of the nightmares don't have these severely distorted like spaces around them though, do they? Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't noticed that with other ones. So I don't know exactly what this thing is doing to the world around (laughs) it, but it seems to be distorting the entire room. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of what the... Terramorphic expanse, or the, yeah. is it evolving? Water? Yeah, it's well, that one's expanse. more like the like the building is just like that. This yeah. is all wavy and yeah, weird, like yeah, yeah. Which I don't s- remember seeing that on other cards. Yeah, and I think we deduced that the faces in a lot of these are probably representatives of like the survivors who are having the nightmare. Yeah, because you see these faces, and sometimes they're more like mm-hmm. translucent gas. Yeah. But there's a lot of most of these horrors seem to have some faces represented Mm -hmm. like that and it's not like a single face of the entity itself usually it's yeah it's It's like a group of them a couple of them yeah which that's interesting is that they seem to be shared nightmares and not something that just one person yeah is there's definitely a bit of a story where oh the lamps yep i love the lamps and that and the osseous stick twister who i don't think we see that card Mm -hmm. in the in this draft but it's hmm? are you a moth because you love lamps yes Yes, that is yeah. correct. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there are actually a bunch of moths in the back of that. Oh, there maybe, are. Maybe I guess maybe that is the references. Moths like lamps. They crave the forbidden lamp. <laughs> what the sun? That's my favorite meme. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I have two favorite memes. Is that one and the being friends with skeletons on the okay. roller coaster? Quit I looking like at that together. Brother, may I have some oats? <laughs> that's a whole different that's a whole different thing with that, that this keeps is coming up on my for you page that veteran survivor has the yeah. same attitude as kaito yeah like that 
that dude is so one inch from becoming a razorkin. Yeah, I think there's something there for me where it's just like overconfidence, but it's undeserved. Where I'm like, you you do not. You like the overconfident. You like Yogmoth yes. is like the other side of that coin. Yeah, but like it's deserved. Yeah, like right. I don't like overconfidence plus. Un it's like you're you don't. You got no business walking around like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's particularly why it bothers you. I think it is. Yeah. yeah I'm just like, get out of here with that attitude. <laughs> yeah, look at that guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, you knocked over an empty armor. Well, here's so. the thing. We don't even know if he did that. Yeah. <laughs> like, look what I did. <laughs> yeah. We don't He's know. He's just walking through a room that got trash. <sighs> stay hidden, stay silent. I like the spooky version of this where the cellar spawn is like looming over that yeah. person. It looks like Agent Cooper from it Twin kinda Peaks. Does. Yeah. It kind of Which does. makes me like it all the more. Yeah. I hope he gets some pie. Yeah. And coffee. Yeah. I could go for some coffee. Uh huh. I don't need to sleep tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Take this. Take this. Stay hidden. Stay safe. It's so good. It's cool art. It's cool card. That guy's smarmy. We're not having it. <laughs> Smarmy is the word of the day, yes. apparently. Apparently, we had a lot to say about this in yeah. the past. Yeah, I think a lot of these observations were just sort of reiterating what we arrived at, but we yes. took a while to arrive at yes. that conclusion. We were kind of talking we, through it more. Yeah. Maybe, no, we weren't talking about taking the card for the draft. Yeah, that definitely make sense. not. Yeah. <sighs> Pick two. Oh, that's right. We've found a we special not, guest. Yeah, we hadn't seen this before. Mm -mm. More gremlins like we saw in the Most Valuable Slayer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of these these cards where there's a whole bunch of gremlins. Yes. And usually, they're not on our side. Mm -hmm. but, there's one that we'll see in a little bit. Yeah, it's right there. I think we're going to look yeah, at it in a moment. Yeah. I think we're going to look at it momentarily. Yeah. Oh, come on, let's go. <gasps> but first, we're going to look at this one. The good Razor Kin. Yes. Stay, stay. Why do I? Where? Why did we keep moving? Why did I? I, I, I had the mouse. Why did I, I do this? I don't know. <laughs> it's like you're driving right I now. Was, maybe we were still talking about is this maddening hex good? Yeah. Surely we weren't considering going into red at this point. At least not with a double. I remember because I remember talking about that. I was like, we're not going to do a double red. Yeah. Like we're Which not. Which is a very reasonable thing to say. And yet, <laughs> yeah, I keep mousing it. But look at it! You're thinking about it, but I'm like, no, we're not going to splash a double red. Like you hardly ever see the special guest card, so yeah. you got to take the after... Oh, there, there's Pinhead. Yeah, we got well, Pinhead. obviously, like, missing the head part. Yeah. That's the vibe. That's clearly yeah. a, like, Cinnabite. That's the mm -hmm. what they're called, right? Yeah, the Cinnabites. From the Hellraiser movies, mm -hmm. yeah. That, that... That is a perfect match between what's represented and the name of the card. That yeah. is disturbing yeah. mirth. That's it perfect. is. <laughs> great representation i don't think i ever concept. hear the word mirth outside of talking about christmas yeah like that's that's when you have you were mirthful or something. i don't know or maybe it i'm confusing it uh it was I, i'm listening to bram stoker's dracula on audio right now yeah and they described someone as being mirthless okay this is the best razorkin it is like the wheelers from yeah. Return to Oz. I had that childhood nightmare experience. Yeah, but it's got the E collar and it's got that like mm -hmm. circus slash Sergeant yeah. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club like jacket. Also, like, it, like looks pretty interchangeable with a lot of Rakdos characters. Like yeah. I think this guy could go to Ravnica and oh, fit yeah. right in. Yeah, I love this one. Like they might have some questions about the wheel. <laughs> but other than that, I think he'd fit right but in. But this one just yeah, this doesn't feel like all of those the, most of the razor can look like slasher yeah. characters they look like someone who's most of them have a mask like mm -hmm. a goalie mask they're yeah. they're clearly derived from jason and that kind of mm -hmm. antagonist like that genre yeah and but, then we have this 80s time traveler she's so she's so breakfast club and her little gremlin friend yeah which i really like this card yeah this... and i like the concept of being buddies with the gremlin yeah it's fun that it's an azorius character who's yeah. the friend of red thing and it's like this is the alternate history of what would have happened if in the movie gremlins yeah. that kid had instead been like yeah i could work with these scaly boys yeah, like these are my new little buddies. like i just found out what kind of snacks stripe yeah. liked and like worked with them instead of melting them yeah i feel like that's what i probably would have done as a kid but uh, definitely that's what you i mean won. i also like played with spiders so with black widow you played with black widows do not bury the lead 
Before you knew what they were. What'd you I call them? Danger marbles? Danger, danger marbles. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know what they were. Retroactively. I retroactively call called them danger marbles. I was pre-verbal <laughs> at the time. So, like, I don't have a distinct memory of this. This is a story I have heard secondhand it's from a good my story. parents. But, yeah, they were not thrilled with my <laughs> with Needless to say, they were not thrilled with my proclivities as a no, young person. I imagine not. Just making sure our backup audio is still recording. Yep. So yeah, uh, I think at this point we decide. Uh huh. I'm pretty sure we go ahead and decide to grab that razor kin. Yeah, I think it's like, well, because we're looking we want to splash something, right? This might be. We have this moldering gem. We got to splash. We don't have a ton of critters. Yeah, we can't probably splash triple black. Yeah, for Valgamoth, but do that. but we can splash one red for a razor kin horde color. Like that's doable. It's, we could get there. Yeah, yeah. It's like. It's manageable. It's really powerful. So mm -hmm. it's like not a terrible yeah. gameplay idea. And it's really cool. Because we've got, it's so far, you know, we've got the Oblivious Bookworm. We've got some other stuff. We don't really have any good payoffs. Yeah. So we're like, okay, what are we like getting to? Yeah. All right. So we got more Glitch Ghosts, but they don't look, I don't know. There, there seems to be a range in the Glitch Ghost style. Yeah. These ones... They clearly have sheets on. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I like these more than the... I do too. They look older. They look more like... Well, maybe they manifest in different ways. Yeah. So, like, if these are from an earlier period in the history yeah. of the house... These look like Innistrad. Yeah. Some of the, the spirits we see on Innistrad, whereas some of the other glitch ghosts, like the um the Soul Rager down there, mm -hmm. just looks more... 80s 90s yeah. reference and well, I, I mean like maybe that. that's what happens if you die in the 90s you know you turn yeah. into that if you die in the 1890s you turn into this like this dude has like 90s hair he looks yeah. like the the first mishra art <laughs> yeah he kind of does <laughs> i can't tell what he's doing if he's like uh what Measuring. do they call it um He's got his, like, paranormal investigation gear. Oh, yeah. You know, or, like, yeah, yeah. paranormal analyst. Yeah, yeah, he's, like, trying to pick up... He's uh, trying to detect the ghosts that are right behind him. He's like, where are they? And, and they're we're all like, right, he's right well, there. Yeah, they're right behind him. They're staring at him. <laughs> you want to talk yeah. about these hands and these, yeah. these tongues? <laughs> so, again, we got too many tongues. And they're coming out of some hands. So, yep. just, like, misplaced anatomy yeah. uh, keeps coming up on this plane. And they're attacking the cast of Saved by the Bell? Yes. Um, yeah, we got this 90s girl here who is understandably disturbed yeah by this monstrous emergence this is a fun card is it that these cards specifically look like of their time or is it just the place that our mind gets to after looking at these cards for that long because suddenly <sighs> i'm really focused on the archetypes of these characters what time period they're from and everything i don't know i mean i think the character we do have some distinct differences in how some of the characters yeah. look like their overall style yeah. Uh, like this one is very 90s. Mm -hmm. The other one on the Gremlin, the Azorius Gremlin Tamer. So 80s, like, that hair. Real 80s in particular. looking. Yeah. Um, yeah, we get some different. And I don't know, maybe that was part of the art uh directives like what it they could were be, wanting could be. to see i'm not i'm not too sure this one that whole creepy section when i'm not really focused on it kind of out of the side of my eye looks kind of floral or bot yeah. botanical and i don't know if that's just because there are some vines on it mm -hmm. and it's in on a green card in kind of a green space well i just thought of something else too is like the way the hands are positioned it's kind mm -hmm. of like evokes a spider yeah and so i like that as a flavor element because that card kind of functions you think it's going to be a bite but it's actually the card that does the damage yeah. so we're kind of we're not depicting an actual monster but something that kind of looks like something else yeah liver die we noticed looking at this higher resolution mm -hmm. that those portals are not like on a wall they are floating yeah. in space and there's in the far more. distance there's a bunch of other portals or windows or but you can't there. get to them no nope. you can only access you can only live or die yeah those i don't are know how you options. got here yeah that's but, a great question but that's where you are now that's where you are and it's so much closer to just die so you might as well <laughs> you gotta go all the way around <laughs> the stairs if you want to live it's a lot of work the uh i don't the... remember when i talked about it initially okay because i think i i am not the kind of person who wants to join a cult but i love the fit for the cocoon <laughs> cult i would absolutely, you might consider it on i would the basis. consider it on the basis like you have real limited options on dustmore yeah i want to wear that do you want to if i gotta crawl in a cocoon to wear it i'm down i believe you would just crawl in a cocoon because that sounds neat i would crawl in a cocoon without any <laughs> any encouragement here you also get the fit but if i also get to wear that bonus points yeah here's the sad part 
okay, I do like Nashi as a character. Yeah. And I am usually happy. Well, okay. Except in this stupid story. <laughs> <laughs> where yeah, Nashi, like he said, he, uh, he does some things that yeah, were well, not like so great. I, sympathetic with Nashi has lost his mom and is trying to find her, even the you know kind of the shadow, the reflection, mm -hmm. the memory of her. I get that, but he goes and gets some some of his Nazumi pals who come with him, yeah. and when we catch up with them uh, narratively. They're like, oh my god, we're all getting picked off. This is so miserable. Mm -hmm. And now she's like, we're still gonna go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I'm overdoing it, but yeah. he's... I just hate having expendable characters who are just mm -hmm. expendable because they don't have plot armor. Why doesn't he just tell the gang they need to split up once they get in the spooky house? I mean, that's what you I do. don't know. I honestly, I think that it might explain, well, he didn't tell them they needed to come, they chose to, or something like that, but mm -hmm. it still, it doesn't okay. feel right. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. And here's just a great resonant trope. Yeah. Like the... Now, in the in the movie, <laughs> this person is going to die real soon. Yeah, because they are earning it yeah. by pushing their friend into the, the zombies to uh, slow them down. Yep. But, like, they captured a trope. They captured it mechanically. You know, you throw mm -hmm. the person behind to yep. distract the zombies and you sacrifice them. And, yeah, you get away with it for mm -hmm. a little while. Except yeah, usually you get away now. with it till the end of the game because you're indestructible. Yeah. Like, that's a good card. <laughs> I think we take the paranormal analyst here. I think so. Oh, yeah, yeah. That we seem to be headed that sure way. That's and what we grab. Leaning into the, the manifest and payoffs because mm -hmm. when you've got the bookworm and the. You'd prefer some more bookworms. But if you can have that in an analyst, that's pretty good. Yeah. That was probably my favorite thing to do in this set. Oh. Do you like spiders? I love spiders. <laughs> Come back, spider! Spider! All right, there we go. I love this little spider. The big googly it's so eyes. so cute with the big googly eyes. I, even when we were looking at this yesterday, I didn't realize on the upper left and right, there's a much bigger there's eyes. more eyes. I love eyeballs. Yeah. And there's so many eyeballs in this set. It's great. Yeah. But the ones on the upper left and right are like the ones on the plants that show yeah. up in like greenhouse. And actually on the play mat, um, the arena play mm -hmm. mat for Duskmorn. I like how on the bird spinner, the eyeballs are like tacked on. They're not exactly... <laughs> they're not fully integrated. Yeah, they're not fully integrated. Yeah. They're like, just like an afterthought. Maybe it's kind of a Katamari situation? Maybe. <laughs> or maybe Valgavoth just doesn't have a real good... Maybe Valgavoth doesn't use references when he's creating these things. And he's like, I remember what spiders look like. <laughs> and I, yeah. How or, many or maybe, do they have? Where maybe, are they? Maybe they popped open a portal to Innistrad maybe. and got the jar of eyeballs. And it oh, like that's true. fell they over. Just, it just kind of tumbled in. <laughs> that's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really fun card to play too. Yeah. Which is, I think, what we are going to end up taking out of here. No regrets. Um, I I might have encouraged you to take this. You would have been right too. I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because I it's wanted great. to play with it. And also the twitching doll token is really yes. rare. Made sense of the brood spinners. I love that. Yes. And here's here's a here's a big shark with uh big some old extra shark. parts. Yeah, this one's got some tentacles. Yep. There's somebody in the water who's not having a good day. Yep. I feel like. Composition-wise, that piece is pretty similar to the long neck. I don't know why I feel the long neck one more. The green four yeah, that we looked at I earlier. I think it's because it's the point of view. Yeah. Because it's looking at us. Yeah. And okay. that one is looking off to the side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like the the direction of motion. Yeah. On the that uh, the long neck is more confrontational. Yeah. <laughs> more evil leprechauns. Yep. Is there anything new in this pack? I think we've no. looked at all these. Alas, and we're we're winding down. We're about to hit the wheel, and mm -hmm. I think that's. We've seen most of what we're going to see. I really like the Pyrana flies. Those yeah. are cool. I've always thought it would be neat if fish had wings. <laughs> Good, yes. <laughs> I like the, 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 the way this process kind of strips our way our inhibitions and lets us just kind of train of thought, expose yeah. our inner monologues. You know, there's a lot of things I don't say. Um... And this There's is the a lot of things I do. Yeah, and this is that the opportunity. That was one of them. I, I'm glad. Yeah. I'm very glad. Oh, yeah. Uh, Cryptid I like, Inspector. I like this card. And it looks like she has bludgeoned the... The Branch Snapper? The Branch that Snapper. That thing's a 7-6. Yeah. So I guess that's kind of a nice tie-in between the art. Like, she mm -hmm. can chub up enough. Yeah. We can't just say that. Okay, that's we right. We gotta explain chub up. Yeah, all right. 
So, chub up is a term that we started using to indicate when something gets big in magic. So usually with one one counters. With one one yeah. counters. It doesn't always have to be one-one yeah, counters, because yeah. there's other ways things can temporarily become big. Mm -hmm. But generally, a chubbed-up creature stays big, so plus yeah. one counters. Right, right, right. Which started with you doing a Corvald yeah, proxy? Yeah, so I drew a really crummy, low-quality Corvald proxy, and I didn't have enough space to write out all the rules text. So I just wrote chub-up exclamation point, yeah. and then plus one, plus one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was... and, and we all understand what that means. And yeah. We're all happier. It's we're, become our a lives thing. are better. Yeah. I love that planes. That one's I, really pretty. I like so many yeah. of them. I guess it's not planes, just the duels. It's... Um, I don't play a lot of white. I play some white, but not a ton. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, planes don't really grab me but aesthetically, but I love that one. Yeah. Now oh, we got two friendly teddies in this pack. Yeah. They're very friendly, very personable. <laughs> Oh, yes, the cornfield. I think we spent some time talking about aliens here. Yeah, and I just don't. I, I also have this really nice set of proxy dual lands, mm -hmm. like like revised dual yeah. things that I have in my Scarecrow deck that I got because the artist made such cool, like, spooky Halloween-themed ones. Yeah. And I love every single one of them except the Savannah, which is a flying saucer thing. I don't like grouping aliens with the rest of horror. It just feels like a different thing. It's like... To me, that's sci-fi that has horror elements. Yeah. And everything else in this set is horror. But here we have Fear of Abduction. We have the UFO rare yeah. and we have... <laughs> oh, no. Now that I like. Rare. I like that a lot. And it wasn't until we looked at this sci blown up that I saw these figures in the lower left here. Yeah. These kind of protagonists. And there's a little figure there running under it, which mm -hmm. really makes the chandelier look a lot bigger than I realized it was. This yeah. is, it's very this is huge. It's like a... I don't know, each of those strands is like 10 or 15 feet long. Yeah. That head is bigger than a person. Terrifying. Yeah. I don't know, it looks pretty neat to me. I mean, it looks like it's actually hanging from a ceiling. Yeah, it does look like it's tethered, so like, I don't know if it can actually do anything Maybe it to should you. have Defender. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if it can do anything to you. <laughs> from where it is, but I'm not sure that it can't. It's like the various um, walls and doors in Labyrinth mm -hmm. where you have just this big talking head and it's going to be very menacing and say threatening things to yes. you, but it really can't move. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to shake my tines, whatever those are. That's kind of like Christmas tinsel. <laughs> Do not tell what I said that. Yeah, I don't think it would that. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Hey, uh, Derek gonna, said... <laughs> I'm gonna have weird nightmares tonight. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> the chandelier was so mad at me. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, we're... We're coming up on the wheel here. Oh, we so... take the chandelier. I forgot yeah. that. Well, I think my, my thought was we have a lot mm -hmm. of... Uh, manifest red and I humping for yeah. more so maybe it'll be relevant. Also just there wasn't a lot of other stuff that's relevant. Oh I like this one how the person is unraveling into ribbon. Yeah. But I think we've seen most of the cards for the first time now so mm -hmm. kind of final thoughts on Duskmorn as this is kind of the last content we'll probably do on it. Yeah. Um, over. So when I first Creepy. heard about this set I had The other Wheeler reference. Yeah. <laughs> I had a lot of excitement, and then when we started seeing spoilers, I kind of had less excitement, mm -hmm. um, just because it initially to me felt like, oh, this is the set you're supposed to really like, and it's not <laughs> like you crappy. specifically like, as a person. Like yeah. this felt like very targeted content for me. Yeah. So like I went into it with the expectation, like I am gonna love this. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is fine. There's some stuff I like yeah. from it, but like. I still like Thunder Junction more, which feels so weird. That is so weird, yeah. It feels so wrong, I, but it's true. Yeah. Thunder Junction was a real lesson for me because I yeah. did not expect to like that. Because, yeah, same. I was like, I went into that expecting to like, this is not for me at all. I'm not going to like this. I've lived in Texas my whole yeah, life. I same. grew up kind of being irritated by all the Western stuff because I was like, yeah. I don't really fit in here. I'm, I'm like, that's not who I am I'm, just because I'm from here. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a theater yeah. kid. You know, this is not my vibe. Yeah. Uh, but I think maybe I just kind of end up pushing a little too hard against mm -hmm. it. I'm like, I don't actually hate it. I just don't like it. And then, yeah, you, you combine... 
it with something I love like magic and suddenly it's kind of turns out if Tiny sort of... Bones is there I'm in right <laughs> that's all it took for yeah, me yeah <laughs> Tiny Bones is great I just want to see skeletons in cowboy hats yeah yeah I, I'm still not my favorite and Dustmorn also mm -hmm. aesthetically not my favorite but I ended up liking yeah. a lot of parts of it quite a bit I think the the visual style particularly on, like the um, oblivious bookworm they went with a lot of these things that are like sci-fi costumes mm -hmm. from 80s movies yeah. rather than like actual 80s clothes that okay. human beings yeah. wore maybe like, it just feels a little too like manufactured like i was just wa watching the the thriller video yeah. with with my daughter the other day and like actually the clothes that the oblivious bookworm and like the yeah. windbreaker and all those things they look more like michael jackson's costume in that yeah. in that uh video than they do like anything anyone wore on a regular yeah. basis like stranger things does a much better yeah. job of conveying what the 80s actually looked like there's a lot more drab yeah uh, yeah there's like there needs to be more things that are just kind of yellow yeah <laughs> or yellowed yeah is maybe the it's more there's a lot more yellow and brown than it seems yeah. like what the what's become the movie shorthand mm -hmm. for 70s or 60s i think is actually more representative of yeah. what the 80s actually looked like well it's like i think they're missing us. out on you know like a lot Crab. of people forget maybe now like how common it was to have smoking in restaurants and public places and so like yeah. there needs to be that thin patina or thick patina <laughs> of just years and years of cigarette smoke and yeah. i think that's what a lot of this stuff is missing yeah and you really can't convey a grimy feeling of rubbing yeah. your finger on something and having ugh, mm -hmm. come up on it yeah. on a magic card well yeah. i really Magic is a, an innovative game made by an innovative team mm -hmm. please do not innovate in that direction or do. i don't want I don't no know. i don't want to feel <laughs> I don't want textured cards. I don't no. think. They keep surprising me, though. I don't know. I mean, maybe we do. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty convinced I don't. So, yeah. That's the deck we came up with. End up splashing. <laughs> yeah. Mostly uh, Simic with a little bit of with, red. With, no, and black. Because we do the oh, Brood yeah, Spinner and right. the Razor King Horde Collar. We do splash black. Yep. And uh, stuck with that. I don't think we ever got to play the blue, the Brood Spinner. But we do... Did we play the Razor Kid uh, we, we We recorded with commentary for two games. Yeah. And uh, we I don't think we did. But I, I, I ended up getting like seven games out of the entire thing. Okay. Not too much spoilers. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't like a 7-0 trophy. Um, but no? You, you, you didn't trophy with that? No, no, I did not. <laughs> but I, I went positive. It's more than okay. three wins, I'll say hey, that. That's awesome. Um, and uh, I think I did get to play both the Horde Caller and the Brood Spinner. Okay. Over. Brood Spinner is really good. I don't think it's even a stretch to put it in this deck. I don't think it's a stretch to splash either. I think it probably was a stretch to splash both. That was more of like, like I'm only going to get to do one more draft one. in this format. I'm going to have a little bit of fun. Okay. I don't know. I don't, yeah. know. I don't think it was crazy either. It's, it's just fine. But yeah. Um, so in the end, liked Duskborn a lot more than I was afraid I might. I Because I love Bloomborough. I yeah. love that aesthetic. Yeah, I do. I do like Duskmorn, I didn't end up disliking it. I think it does have a lot of um I'm trying to think of how to explain it. It's like people's maybe not so much memories, but things that are filtered through it's like nostalgia filtered through the rose colored glasses of your memories. Yeah. Plus people who weren't there watching movies set in the time period. <laughs> yeah. And equals this. Yeah. Um, which is fine. It just uh it does feel a little bit different in terms of like remembering the kind of things that were around and there are some hits like the the trap not trapped in the screen um the the, the screen ghost, the artifact screen. yeah the artifact screen yeah. where i'm like okay yeah that kind of looks like i mean it's got some modifications but like that kind of looks like the tv we had growing up and yeah. like that that hits a nostalgic chord for me um and it's i mean it's not all about just trying to get the nostalgia feels going but you know i think it is interesting to take we've never had a magic set really that has taken place in a set that is inspired by an era that we lived through yeah that's and that feels point. a little different it does than other things not sure i love it <laughs> but yeah i don't know it, i think it feels for me a little bit like when i saw mac and me on the netflix reboot of 
mystery science theater Uh because that was a movie that i grew up watching as a kid and like begged my dad to rent for us at the video store Uh and seeing it pop up on mystery science theater was a weird feeling oh i haven't had that yeah exact experience that weird feeling i hear what you're saying so that's kind of how i feel about some of the things in this i had not framed things that way but that makes sense (laughs) All right. Well, um, Foundations actually, as we're recording it, launched today. I've gotten one game in of that so far, but it's it's such a traditional fantasy set in yeah. contrast to everything. Like we've, there's been so much controversy over the past year and certainly over the coming year about yep. the settings. Uh, mm-hmm. But that one, that is a bastion of classic magic, classic magic. So uh, I don't know if we'll do some content on that, but definitely back to Fallen Empires. Uh, probably next yeah, week. Yeah, we have more to say about Fallen Empires. Yeah. And we have a, a, a special birthday we do. episode, which should be coming out after this one. Yes. Um, so that's on the 15th. Uh, and we'll talk to you later. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Uh-huh. <laughs>